The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. It is time to keep your appointment. Well, I hope, what? It's not oh. an, I hope it's not a bloody, bl- not a, you know, one of those razor blades in that apple. Oh. Well, that was quite a good haul from that house there. We've we've done all right tonight so far with this trick or treating, haven't we? Well, it's not too bad. What, what, I think, what are you? I'm Wolfman, obviously. Oh. Look at me. I, I'm, oh, I'm a penguin from the 89 Batman. I know. It's. Bl- I think that's the reason we're doing so well is because, uh, you know, I'm Wolfman <laughs> specifically. <laughs> Well, I'm specifically Benicio del Toro's Wolfman as well, and I think that's what's selling it. And you're Danny DeVito's Penguin. It's we're being good. Quite we're both specific. particular, very specific, and uh, yeah, I kind of got that sort of yeah, look look about me with the pointy nose and that. You know, I'm, I'm um, doing my inner Danny DeVito. I'm not sure you needed the raw fish in your pockets. No, really, no, but but, but you know, um, at least people are going like, okay, get going, get going. Hang on, look at this in my bag. Oh, what, oh, what is it? It's a there's a marathon in here. It's not Snickers, a marathon. Wow. Hang on, let me check the sell by date on this. This is before they were called Snickers in the EG. Oh, Hang on a minute. Maybe this says American. It's out of date 21 years ago. <laughs> Eat Shall it. I still eat it? Eat yeah, it. Yeah, I'll eat it. All right, I'll eat put it. that in the bag. Right, let's get let's get down to the next look house. Look at then. this. My Mars bars looks like it's got peanuts in it. How's that work? I hope that is peanuts. I think that might be a turd cow. Is that a turd? Someone's up. that sweet corn. Oh. Chuck that in the bush. Right. <gasps> oh. What's... Who's that? There's someone in the bush. They're stepping out. <gasps> Is that... Is it William Shatner? Is that William Shatner in a boiler suit? Has he been working on his car? Oi, Willie! Are you working on your car? Oh, my God. He's not saying Hang anything. On. He's just staring. There's someone across the road. Who's that man waving Who's at that? us? Wait, is that Columbo? No, it's Donald Pleasant. It's Donald, it's Donald Pleasant. Pleasant. What's he saying? Can you hear? Get away. He's saying something about get away. Let's get, come on. Uh, Move your ass out of here. What, what? What are you saying? Get get your ass out of here. I, why? Let's just let's just move on to the next Should house. Should we just go? Okay, cool. Let's just get let's knock on the next door. Hopefully, William Shatner's like can go on back inside now and he's fixing his car and those overalls. Right. Well, he's not there. Look, he's vanished. But let's knock on this one. Let's this go is number to, thirteen. Let's get to the next one. We we we've got to go and do this Halloween podcast special. Right. Let's knock on number thirteen then. You ready? Right. Yep. All right. Oh my God. Who is it? What? I don't know. Is that a creature from the Black Lagoon? Let's get going. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to get let's going. Get Come on, podcast. we've got enough candy and sweets here. Let's get going and run back. Come let's on, get let's out get here. Let's get the microphones on. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode one hundred and forty-six. Two, two. <laughs> I did not know. Six, six, I, six. I jumped into the recording and I was like, I don't know what number it is. And Dan's just putting up fingers slowly in front of me, but I, I mapped no, it just wrong. Me. That's oh. just me giving you the middle finger. Bird me off. Oh, Dan says it's episode one. That's weird. Double digits. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, welcome, Halloween spooky dooky people. Your, your ghouls, your ghosts, your goblins, your, your green, slimy things. Slimer, anything. Anything spooky dooky. Yeah, terror dogs, uh, Zool, and things that aren't from Ghostbusters, like Wolfmen, Draculas, uh, Brides of Frankenstein, Goblins, and uh, Garden Gnomes that have come to life. Gav, it's Dan here. Oh, you're oh Gav. Gav. Yeah. I think we did that. I'm not sure, actually, now. I don't think we did. Sure, no. We're very excited, because, we're, A, we're full of sugar, because, you know, it's that time of year, and, B, we're ex- ex- very excited, because it's, 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 it's Halloween. Halloween. Spooky. 
<laughs> you all know the song. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Um, obviously, this day, uh, this uh, episode is released a little bit before Halloween, but uh, for us to do like a Halloween special, we have to. We can't do it live on the day. It's just one of those things. Um, yes, I hope everybody's well, safe, happy in the world. Indeed, this is our ninth Halloween special. Hmm annual halloween special so yeah what, great what times doing? what we're covering we are covering some uh, fun comedy <laughs> horror family friendly stuff one very old and one very new one borrowed and one blue <laughs> Uh, yeah, movie. I've got uh, one of them's a sort of kind of my choice, really. Well, last year I was like, oh, I really want to do it. And Dan was like, Dan was kind enough to say, yeah, go for it. And that is actually uh, the Frankenstein, Abergastone meet Frankenstein. Um, the old school. 48. The old school universal film, but uh, of fond, fond, fondness from, from childhood, which we talk about when we get to it. And it's just. It's just a fun film. To be honest, what we've done this year are pretty much family-friendly horror double bill. We've pretty much done Huey Halloween. Um, you could watch with youngsters. It's not too bad. There's the odd sort of thing, but it's no more than, uh, say, an episode of Simpsons. Um, you know. Yeah. So Huey Halloween being the other one that we're covering. Um, yeah, it's definitely. It's you know, it's, it's got some. It's got some jokes that might sit well in an American Pie movie as well. But also it kids won't notice it like you said simpsons stuff goes over your kids heads adults get it funny stuff yeah so we're doing those and um you've got some spooky things to talk about world of the strange yeah bill murray is already (laughs) here he's carving a pumpkin hollowing out that pumpkin so far he's made one hole in it and i don't like what he's doing with it to be honest but is he making um, a glory hole pumpkin he might be i'm not sure i'll have to i'll have to check back Uh, in with it's like american pie but the halloween version Oh, American, American pump, pumpkin. pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie! <laughs> the Halloween spin-off. Um, yeah, so he, he's here. He's got some stories for us, um, which is great. Why is, he, but why is he putting three holes in it around it? There's one there, one around there. One. Has he like got friends coming around or something? Don't cross the streams, Bill. <laughs> he should know not to cross the streams. And um, I don't oh, like Jesus. the fact that in this room there's three of us. Bill, stop looking at me with that glinted whiskey eye of yours. It, look, look, it's Halloween if Bill wants what Bill wants. Um, so yeah, Bill's here. <laughs> We're going to be talking about talking about our movies, watching thons that we've been watching all the way through October. Yeah, watching uh, the stuff we've been doing, our 31 and 31. Obviously, we haven't completed it. Well, you have. You've fucking gone past it of the, of the number. You're just doing you because you like to do... In the days of 31, how many films? Well, uh, well, I don't. I just attempt to get to 31 movies. Yeah. I try. Well, uh, we'll come on to that in a moment then. And uh, like we, you know, there's no rules to it, but we'll come on to that in a minute. But, but first of all, um, it must be our Halloween episode because about 10 minutes before we hit record, my nose suddenly started pissing blood. So, Lord knows what that was about. My wife came down and said, you're ready. Oh, my God, Dan, what's going on? And I had just had blood all over the, t- the kitchen, the sink, my tissues. I was like, I'm really sorry. I don't, don't know what's going on. But uh, that's all stopped now, which is good. Um, weird. Very weird. Maybe I was just very excited to uh, be recording. I'm going to go um, excited. Yeah, maybe it was. My body gets excited wrong. When I get excited, rather than get an erection, my nose just gets blood coming out of it. <laughs> weird very weird um so that's that uh but yes uh what have you been up to gav obviously we know we've, been, we've both been watching horror movies we're going to come on to that in a moment but have you been doing anything else <clears throat> no you and your son did a little bit of pumpkin carving but what else tell me about that tell me about other things you've been doing that are fun and exciting and spooky yeah i was with them yesterday for the uh for my day with them in the week and i was like what can i do so i did what i do most now each year which is like there's a garden center about 30 minutes from me um <clears throat> which do like a uh a, a halloween walkthrough yeah um so i did that i think i sent you some pictures yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i didn't really put them up on social media i've kind of not put stuff up on social media anymore um but yeah um it was really fun some really cool stuff there um there's there's a at one point elijah goes to me I think that's supposed to be a baby coming out, and it's like this zombie torso on the floor, with women going ah, and then just like her baby just been ripping out of her on the floor, and I was like, "Wow!" 
made out of pumpkins or just a no, zombie? No, this is like a like a you know very realistic Bloody plastic hell. thing or whatever. And I was just like, shit. Okay, yep. I guess that's that. And logic, we go now. <laughs> yeah. But he was scared though. I liked it. And, and at times I'd push him forward. No, no, no. Stop pushing me back. So I had to go front. You know, it's quite fun. Aww. And then we came home and we uh, carved a pumpkin. Well, he carved a pumpkin. I just held it. He designed the whole thing. And I called it a punk kin. Because like I'll it. show you what it looks like when, when he finished. Because it, it just looks like a punk. He's just got he's got the blade stick out of his head with a little, little pumpkin carver sticking out. He's got uh, some big plastic teeth. And it just like it's the really punkest pumpkin. So that's why I called it a punk kin. We that, that that should be a movie. There should be a, a rock uh, horror movie a called rock Opera, Smashing Punkkins or something like that. You know, Ra- uh, 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 yeah, horror opera Halloween. Yeah. I fucking hate opera. I fucking hate musicals. Well, yeah, I know. What have you been doing? Uh, yeah, I've <coughs> um, my son's been off sick this week, so everything we've done in in the centre of Bristol is there's always there's loads of Halloween stuff up so he's very excited to spot skeletons ghosts takes about three times as long to get anywhere because he's like look daddy a pumpkin and then we walk five more feet and he's like look daddy a pumpkin and he's so excited about it all so that's great and um, we went to a, a Halloween party today my cousin has got a couple of children as well so she's she goes all out I sent you some pictures she's got a life-size mummy um, in the hallway, which she keeps in a bag in the garage, in a, ba- a bin bag in the year. garage. For this year. It's like a body. on it. It's, it's life-size. Um, um, she's got that in the hallway. She's got three pumpkins with a projector pointed at them, and they sort of got that animated like that. thing going on where they're singing along. Yeah. You know, So whatever song is on, like Ghostbusters, whatever it is, they're singing along to it. It's pretty cool. She had that cauldron with... Um, dry ice in it and you blow on it and all the, the smoke goes everywhere and it looks really cool edith was dressed up as a, a witch jack was dressed up as a bat um, and i found a mask which looked a bit like the mask from demons um so i was pretty chuffed with that so i wore that um yeah so we had a lot of fun there a lot of sugar was was eaten um and i think on halloween itself when it comes this will be the the first year i'll probably take them out to a select few neighbors knocking on the doors um, oh, cool. old old man withers down the road with his his razor blades and his apples we won't be knocking on his door no um you know yeah, and the I'll, pedo up the road no I'll, yeah i'll be trick-or-treating um daisy went to fort park today she went to the uh scary halloween thing thing they do there um, she won't be trick-or-treating with me but elijah and daisy are trick-or-treating with me we always got my parents road which just every year just fucking rocks it's just the whole year everyone all the people in the street it's like a massive thing so many kids go there and stuff when i was a kid fuck all nothing there nothing at all i know when we were kids we were kind of deprived really obviously i'm 45 you're 46 so over 40 years ago now you didn't really get the celebration of halloween in the uk that you do now no, no, it's like- um you know, like you Nothing. said, uh, we also went to a pumpkin um, picking patch as well. We go to, to a couple every year. Those things are so ten a penny now. They're everywhere in the UK. You know, pumpkin patch picking. There's trick or treating galore. There's even specific rules like if you go knocking on doors between four and six, then you're a toddler with your parent. You only knock on the doors of like people who've got decorations up. All that kind of stuff. None of this was around when I was a kid. I'd love to have done trick or treating. Yeah, I chatted to my mum about it. She's laughing at me because <clears throat> I said, "Well, I remember when we had a, a, a Halloween party. You said, yeah, we can have a Halloween party. Really, it was a fireworks party because that was more exciting for people mm. than Guy Fawkes Night, which is a load of bullshit. I don't care about." Um, and and I was just there in fancy dress by myself, no one else whatsoever as a kid going, but this is shit, it's supposed to be a Halloween party, I don't care about looking at fucking lights in the sky, who gives a fuck? You know. Yeah, it was more geared towards Halloween, which is only five days, um, bonfire night, which is five days after yeah. uh, the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Who but, gives a fuck? Well, I mean, we, we, we really enjoyed it because my dad would always put on a little mini fireworks display in our garden as kids, and that was fun. Um, it was quite sick as well that we, we would build a guy. Me and my sister would go out and do Penny for the guy. Um, and then once we we bought all our sweets, my dad would then put that guy on the bonfire every year, and we just watched this effigy of Guy Fawkes burning to a crisp to as death. young children. It didn't do me any harm. I'm fine. Look at me. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
The other thing I did, I don't think I mentioned last time because I've done it since we last did the podcast. I went to uh, Whitby with Sarah. I don't think you I did. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, we did a little video. I'm going to put it up on Instagram. We did put it on Facebook. Uh, Sarah and I went to Whitby where, if you don't know, Bram Stoker went on holiday one day and got the inspiration and started writing the novella Dracula. Um, even the that's the town that the boat comes in on um so, far. so i watched a load of horror movies while i was in whitby with sarah we watched dracula was on the first night the peter cushion one amazing on horror channel like that night when we were there watching on tv so i was like this we watched this <clears throat> and we watched some other horror stuff you watched boys of the demeter didn't you as well i did i quite enjoyed it sorry which is cool because obviously that that is <laughs> the opening chapter or so of the Dracula of, book really yeah and really like this I really like that episode when they did that three part episode the BBC adaption thing recently it's on Netflix oh that BBC thing that third, the first that third, episode that was one. amazing yeah the second one I caught like the boat one but that third episode it's just like why did you just totally the like, series was really good then you like ruined it totally I am probably so going to bizarre. go back and watch that, but I won't actually watch part three. I'll pretend that it's a two-parter. Yeah, it's... I don't understand why they all of a sudden thought, right, so we're going to completely change what we've set everybody up for watching and do Dracula this. is now a social media, you know, stalker, and like, what the fuck is going on here? This isn't what Dracula is. I'll tell you what I am going to moan about very quickly, that fucking David Gordon Green Halloween trilogy of films I, the other day, uh, I, know, I thought I'd never get back I thought I'm never going to come back to this here I am back again um, the second one was on Netflix and uh, the other day I was like I'm just going to put it on so I put it on I'm doing this sort of stuff I'm going to just watch it again and I'm just like the second one I remember it being like why is this just like this massive witch hunt and it's like everybody band to-? and it's just oh, I remember that being bad so I watched it and in the first few minutes I was like this looks really good the aesthetic's really good the production's really good we're a Blumhouse film you know you're going to get good production it's in focus there's good sound there's good sound design there's good camera work good character uh, costumes etc everything's really good but then straight away within the first minutes like the the the, the inept police detectives, and I know it's a horror movie where you get policemen, you're always like, why are you policemen doing a stupid thing? But they're doing like really nonsense things, and they'll straight away going, what are you doing? And then it cut to the bar, where it's going, we've got this guy coming out now called Tommy, and he comes on stage and says, I'm going to now tell you all about a story of when I... And it's just like, it's straight away, I disliked it again. So that that was where I started laughing It was just bad. like... Yeah, it's like this is like—is this made by like children for like make a film with numbers? Oh, and the co- the coincidence then was everybody going, "Hang on a minute, we all have the same thing in common." It, yeah, I know. And I was just—I like, had—I turned it off. I laughed at it. And t- I was like, I put some chaos on. I was going to give it a shot because I was like, "Oh, it looks quite good." Like the grain on the film. But yeah, and then the whole Donald L- L- Loomis thing, Donald Pleasant is standing there. What did he do? And it's just like this voice that they've got, you could have done the Loomis better. It's just like, oh man. Anyway, yeah, and an X of this movie still flopped a bit, so I don't know if they'll be doing a trilogy or something. But I don't know, it's with Blumhouse. I read an article earlier where they just seem to be, once upon a time, like this real good indie cinema uh, studio where like Get Out came from and all these like new directors, you, you know, new films. And now it seems to be just remakes and intellectual property, which is already owned, and they're just taking it. Like, they've just released the FNAF. They're like the new Platinum Dunes, aren't they? You know, FNAF, you, you five, kind of... five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, yeah, kind of. They're going that way. Five Nights at Freddy's is a game that Jay's been playing for years. Years yeah. and years and years. And they've just made a movie. Jay came in last night and said... Well, they already made that movie, though, didn't they? With um, Nicholas Cage, Cage, pretty you know much. Mean? Yeah. Because Jay came in last night and said, Oh, my God, they've ruined it. I've heard, I've heard like... Because Jay's got loads of people on it. It's aimed at Jay. Yeah, yeah. And Jay's online with all their friends Twitchers. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jay, um, uh, yeah, said like, they've really heard about the story. It's completely da da da. And I read a review earlier of someone saying they completely just like missed it, missed exactly what it was. It's like, how? <laughs> what are they doing wrong at Blumhouse? Have they just tried to get too big for their own boots and they're just not act- they're ignoring the what the audience actually want, even though they're pe- are they like going? You want this, but we're duping you into it because you're not getting to get what you actually want. Because that it's seems very to be strange. seems to be what's going on. Like the Nexus movie, it's not what people wanted. You know. It's, um... Anyway, that's me. I'm not going to uh, moan. Well, about, I'm not going to moan about Blumhouse because you never know. They might say, "Hey, do you want us to make us a movie for us?" So they listen back and they'd be like, "You dissed us." Oh, okay. Well, fuck you, Blumhouse. Oh no, I'm not saying that. 
just in case. And fuck you, Ghost Castle. S- s- I'm all sell out. But is it selling out? I suppose not, really. No, it's not. Not the Blumhouse. No, we love, we love all, all the people. No, I think Blumhouse has been a really good label. It used no, to be I do as well. When you saw a studio, sorry, when you see that come up, the logo, you'd be like, oh, sweet. But then it's just got, like, so much now. It's like, uh, I watched Totally Killer last night with Jay. Uh, Blumhouse is new thing. A Back to the Future style uh, killing where the woman goes back in time to save her mum who died. Yeah, I've, and I've, it's I've just heard like, all about it. Watched it, and I was like, this is... They've made this film about four or five times now. Exact same sort of film. It's just, yeah. I've heard it's worth a watch, but it's not it's, like no. It's I don't. But it's, it's not even. I'm like, not going to say it's worth a watch. You've seen the film a million times. It's not even yeah. interesting. It's it's kind of just literally like let's throw that out for the kids. It makes some money. Oh, and I actually went straight to Amazon Prime. So I don't know. It's been a funny year for horror this year. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, but uh, when we get the time machine out. In uh, January, one of our January episodes, we'll of course be able to look back at uh, the year and see all the horror movies that came out. But um, it's um, been a funny year. There's been some good ones and there's been some stinkers as well. Tell you what, I'm going to moan um, about now as well. Fucking hell, Gav's on his fucking. Here he goes. He's off now. Hang on a minute. So people are on my lawn the other day, no. I'm going to moan about John McTiernan's first directorial debut film. I was like, wow, the dude a year later made Predator. The year after that, he directed Die Hard. Right, what was his first movie just before Nomads with Piers Brosnan? You remember we were going to do Bonds and Horror? We never did. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I watched Nomads with uh, Sarah. We read it out. She's like, yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, cool. It should be quite good. I fucking out of clue what's going on. I even said to Sarah, what's going on? Because oh, she normally helps me when I get met, get confused with films because it happens. And she's like, I have no idea. I was like, I fucking... And it ended with like, I don't know. I have no idea. Schwarzenegger saw that he must have been fucking smoking some zoots when he watched that movie he saw that movie and was like let's get him to make Predator like what and he persuaded the producers to direct Predator because of the tense scenes in it what tense scenes luckily Arnie knew right because Predator is fucking amazing but that movie's bullshit absolute bullshit I was gutted gutted <laughs> Like, honestly, a year later, you do direct Predator, then do Die Hard. I love... They're t- in my top... Like, probably top ten films, those two. And the year before, you make horror movies. You go, oh, let's check it out. No. Bollocks. Okay. And what's next on your list of... <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just pick a couple. I'm not going to, like, go for all of them. I'll just pick the odd one, which is worth talking about. Oh, I'm going to run through mine very quickly, but um, I won't be long. But uh, before we get to our 31s, I just want to very quickly say Happy Halloween, of course, to all of our listeners, supporters, patrons, etc. We'll do that properly at the end as well. But uh, I feel that I need to say Happy Halloween to everybody because it's, you know, it's a very spooky, special time of year. Um, and I also want to say a big shout out to Don Collier, one of our patrons, our newest patron, actually, because he got his T-shirt, finally got his T-shirt. Um, sorry about that, Don, but I'm glad you got it. And I did post up um a picture of him wearing it which he'd emailed me uh he sent himself, himself a picture of it about five minutes away from camp crystal lake uh where they shot the very first friday the 13th movie which is fucking cool he lives in a, in the u.s so yeah. that was amazing so thank you don thank you for your support i'm so glad you got your t-shirt and thank you for sharing that picture post it up on the facebook page i know you're not on social media my friend which is why i wanted to give you a shout out now thank you dude uh, I won't read your email out because, you know, it's your email and it's between you and us. But, um, yeah, cool. Thank you, dude. I'm glad you got your T-shirt and I hope you're, in, you're enjoying all of the stuff that we put in your ears as well as everybody else's. Because it's not just Don's podcast. It's everyone's podcast. It's when you're sleeping at night, listeners. Each one of you, you don't know this secretly about the podcast. This is what happens in the podcast community world. Now, I'm going to be assassinated by the head of the uh, podcasting circle worldwide. That's the name. Oh, They're going to send you, Why are you doing down. this? I'm going to tell them. I'm telling them. At night, the podcast you listen to at night, the hosts come to your house like Father Christmas. It's magic, they know. They come to your house, they go to your room where you're sleeping, and they actually put proper things in your ears. You're going to be thrown out of the equivalent of the magician circle for telling everyone that. I know. The podcasting circle. I'm going to have assassins sniping me out. The podcast podcasting circle. circle jerk. Yes. And it's we, we put things in your ears. It's not just the audio you hear right now. So 
be warned, listeners, but it's not always bad things. Sometimes we put good things in your ears. Okay. Well, we hope you've all been watching horror movies. The Facebook page has been blowing up with everybody posting what they've been watching. Now, uh, for anyone who isn't aware or isn't on social media, there's something called 31 Horror or 31 in 31 or 31 Days of Horror or whatever you want to call it. And what this can be is that traditionally it's watching a horror movie every day throughout the month of October and finishing up with perhaps your favourite horror movie on Halloween or something big or classic on Halloween night. That's cool and that's kind of evolved over the years to people watching you know or playing video horror video games as well and posting that they're doing that listening to horror music and horror albums um whether you maybe watch three or four in one night and you skip a few nights some people like to just say they've watched 31 you could do that all in one week um some people do more than that i i generally would pick around about 50 movies and try and get through them all over the course of, of the month um uh, it's just whatever you want it to be really but the main thing is you share the what you're doing the excitement that you're doing on our facebook page and everybody's been doing that you know people have been watching uh, the freddy movies uh, the jason movies all the classics but then there's been such random things popping up as well and i know you've been watching stuff you've never seen yeah i failed actually i'm not doing this again because i'm such a neuro divergent weird person that the fact that I'd put this I've made this this a 31 I must watch and then it's like I cannot move from this list I must watch it and then it's like now I'm forcing myself into a corner then I'm like well which one do I watch I don't know and I, I'm not I haven't been enjoying <laughs> forcing myself to watch things that I that's don't. fair enough it's weird it's the first time i've done that uh, because on the side i'm watching random things like i watched the ninth gate again just because it was on freebie and i've not seen it in hd yeah, yeah. and i love that film like, it's a brilliant film and i watched like the other night uh, i watched uh, barbarian uh, sound studio I yeah. couldn't remember the end of that. I had it on Blu-ray, and I was like, I can't remember the end of this. And I was watching it, and I was like, the end going, I don't know what's happened. I don't know what's going I really, on in this I didn't film. like that movie. I really wanted to like that movie, I but I've watched it twice it. now. I really love kind of where it's it's got a message, but I'm a little bit too thick to understand what that is. I think, for, yeah, for me, that's more style over substance. It's really, I love it, though, because it's for me, it's great because it's the sound effects and that sort of stuff. For me, it's not for me to nerd out it's really good and at the moment i've been doing sound effects for star wars film so yeah cool yeah which we could quickly go on to very quickly um we've got a release date for that uh, yeah star wars sanctuary moon which is the deadbolt films our uh, production almost studio almost a year in the making yeah and it's coming We're out in prepping. november November the seventeenth, we're gonna do it. Um, it's not even finished yet, but uh, we. I was like, right, <laughs> putting a date on this because then otherwise we're not getting this done. It so slip to Halloween YouTube. and Christmas. Yeah, on YouTube and premiere. Don't you worry, we will post a link to that. Oh God, everyone and that you'll be sick to death of it. You'll be bored of it. You'll be you'll be watching it every day. I'm hoping though, once you've seen the film, like you, you it's only eight and a half minutes. About, um, I think once you've seen it, you go, oh, that's really good. You go back and you can watch it multiple times because there's so many layers in it. I think that's what's taking so long. You can show your mates. You can show your fan, fans, oh, share friendly. To, share to you can share Wars it with people buddies, that are just anybody. Star Wars fans yeah. or just horror fans, whatever it is. Yeah, do it. Um, you know, and if you can just watch it, like put it on the loop 24 hours a day, all of you. That will really get our ratings up on YouTube. And no, don't. I don't want to cheat. No, do that. It's fine. <laughs> um, we will probably have another episode out before that date's released, so we will remind you all. But then again, you know, that's true. And then it'll just be on YouTube. So then we could just be like, just go to Deadbolt Films and check it out. So yeah. And from there, you'll be able to bounce onto anything else that's on our channel as well. Yeah, it's but great. it's almost done. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, yeah. It's looking very good. I'm very excited. Yeah, there's just so much, so much intricacy and detail, and it's you know. It's, it's got to the point now where I'm just excited to get it out there, and I'm sure you're the same. You know, I'm kind of like it's so precious now. I kind of almost don't want to. I kind of be, want to be like Prince and just lock it up in a basement, and no one ever sees it because I've just I don't. Know, it's, it's so big now; it feels in my head. I don't Wh want anyone which Prince to see it. is this? Prince Andrew locking <laughs> children up in I basements. I don't want, want to know what's locked up in his basement. Oh, you mean Prince, the artist, right? Yeah, Sorry, so I do apologise. Apparently he wrote, wrote, uh, wrote an album once with an engineer, and the engineer was sitting there, did the whole album, and sort of finished it, and said, oh, that's really good, all right. And the guy was like, that's fucking amazing, it's the such best thing I've ever heard. And then he came over and went, beep, and just deleted the whole album. <laughs> wow. 
because he, he well, you know, a true artist is someone that does it for themselves. They're doing it because once they've put it out, they go, oh, that's the thing you get. That's your orgasm. You're going, oh, that, that's fucking out. Like us releasing stars, we're like, there you go. It's fuck. It's not mine anymore. It's the world's. But it's like precious. Like I'm saying, this Star Wars film, I'm just keeping it so no one can ever see it. Or if it's, it's something special just for you or whoever's involved in the making. It's an artist thing. We're well, there we go. Print, Prince in a basement. A Prince Andrew's basement. Not Prince Andrew. Prince, the artist formerly yeah. known as. Imagine that basement, mate. Not even though he had nothing to do with anything because no. he just paid off ten million to a stranger. He, he, he's like, I wasn't there. Take ten million. Do you think I was there? He doesn't sweat. Prince Andrew does, does it, not sweat. I know there's a photo of me with my arm around you, but that means nothing whatsoever. Don't worry about it. You fucking nonce. Right. Anyway, <laughs> fuck you know. Let's get back to thirty-one. Fucking cunt. Right. So, yeah. Jesus. So thirty-one. So anything else you want to talk about? Uh, any others? Do you want to bounce backwards and forwards? Do you want to carry on with your list for a bit? Not really. I also did a well. <laughs> I turned up at the the apartment with Sarah. And like I was like, don't worry. I could take the laptop, HDMI output, plug it into telly. We've got fucking anything we want. No way. <laughs> Turn up for whatever reason on a Samsung telly. It just made everything go green and pink. I was like, what the fuck? And uh, apparently it's a Samsung TV thing. Like, oh, so we had to. And there was a DVD player there. So we had to uh, go, right, I was like, tomorrow I'll go find some DVDs and buy them in. And I found uh, a trilogy box set of Twins of Evil. Um, it's a Hammer box set. Brides, oh, I don't know. Twins of Evil, Sign Cows. Quite, oh, Cirque Vampire Circus. Circus Vampire, Vampire Circus. Oh, yeah, there's a trilogy, isn't there? And then the other one, which is a really random one, um, which was Dracula, Countess Dracula. But it, yeah, wasn't, yeah, it, was, it was a period piece and it wasn't very interesting and I was gutted. So I did watch that as well. I had a full on vampire weekend while I was in Whitby. But that's it, really, apart from that and the movies I've seen for this show. Excellent. And what what will you be finishing up for Halloween on? Do you know? I don't know. Halloween daytime. I've got a day off because I always take a day off for Halloween. And I, um, I don't know. Oh, there's quite a lot of films that I'd, I fancy watching, a few things I want to see. I've got Cujo to watch, but I'm still like, well, I don't know about Cujo. It's got a child in peril and a dog with rabies, and I like dogs. You could, you could watch that in the day and then finish up on something you, like really good in the evening that you, yeah. you know, like a comfort blanket. Yeah, not sure yet. Don't know. Cool. Yes. Anyway, should we do a, should we do an episode? Well, can I talk about my... I thought you'd finish, sorry. I haven't even done, said one of them yet. Well, that's you done, Dan. Right, next. On <laughs> only, only I matter. Um, I am the opposite to you in that because I have so many films to get through on so many lists. If I don't have a pattern in front of me, I, I won't know what to watch. Well, I will, and it will just be random. So last year I did all those Hammer horror movies, but about, about 50 of them, and I really enjoyed doing that. And I thought, <clears throat> let's do a theme next year. So this year, as, as a lot of people know, I'm doing werewolf movies, um, which has been a lot of fun, actually. And, and there's a lot of werewolf movies out there. There's probably about 70 or 80, maybe close to 100, but I'm not obviously watching all of them. And I did talk about some of the ones I've watched on our last episode. So I won't go through all of those. That, um, well, can you quickly mention you put up, I, didn't, I don't even know of it, a Peter Cushion werewolf film on YouTube. What was the name and what yeah, is this? What studio? I'll scroll, oh, I'll scroll, scroll through these then very quickly. So, yeah, I watched the American Werewolf movies, both of them, all the Howling movies. Um, I've watched Werewolf of London, The Wolfman, the original. Uh, Frankenstein meets The Wolfman, which is the original crossover you know that was and that was a yeah, lot of fun well, that la- one. last year i bought the universal wolfman legacy dvd collection and it's all the, it's so good like, i think it's five movies it's so good um yeah i like the scrap that they have at the end big old scrap uh i watched frank um she wolf of london which was probably one of the worst i've seen out of that, all of these so far yeah. the wolfman from 2010 which I th- i'd like to cover with you sometime i really think that remake's it's, quite decent it's not a bad movie and there's a few bits with Rick Baker and that to discuss around that as well. Yeah, it's a shame it, it made him retire, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Curse of the Werewolf, obviously the classic Hammer, the one and only Hammer horror movie they did as a werewolf. Now, there's a couple I want to talk about very briefly. One of those is Wes Craven's Cursed oh, from 2005. Oh, me. That's so now, bad. No. 
don't, okay. don't. I it was, enjoyed it. Was, it. it was made twice because it was so I, shit. I know. I know all about it. I know they reshot pretty much 70% of the film this... and they cut loads of actors out of it. Corey Feldman was in it and his role was cut. But I watched it having only ever seen it once and thought, that's not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad. It was. It was. I thought it was okay. Um, I was a teenage werewolf. Ginger snaps one, two, and three. The second two were awful, but the first one is still a great, great, very original horror movie. Are you a fan of Ginger Snaps? I, I remember when I first watched it. I thought it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first sort of good werewolf movie we'd had in a while. I think I fancied uh, Elizabeth, whatever her name was at the time. What's her name? Catherine Elizabeth. Catherine Elizabeth, who we we've met a couple of times, haven't we? Mm. Um, also did the company of wolves that is a fucking weird film but kind of like it but it's not in my top 10 even werewolf movies but it's it's good it's just a very weird film beware the unibrow uh team wolf team wolf 2 team wolf is definitely one of my favorite werewolf movies of all time it's to do with puberty we've covered it on this show it's that whole thing for me it hit me at the right age and it's got some genuinely creepy stuff in it um Wolfen, which I, I know we've Good talked movie. about. It. Yeah, and it's not even a werewolf movie in some not ways. Not really, it's a killer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so good, though, and it's got a finger midget getting it from House of Dead. It's got a similar vibe to Howling. Not in House that. of Dead. Uh, a Thai West movie. How's the Devil? Sorry. Yes, that's right. Uh, Noonan. Noonan. Tom Noonan. Tom Noonan. Um, it's got a similar vibe to The Howling. It's got a bit of a dirty, you feel a bit gross watching it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And it like, almost has a kind of. Yeah, a vibe almost a little bit to like Manhunter or something. You yeah. Know, the original uh, Silence of the Lambs. It's just kind of, yeah, it's kind of a grittier type sort of film. Yeah. I really like it. I'm a big fan of that movie. Yeah, it definitely grows on me every time I watch it. Mm. Um, I watched Lobos de Argo, which is the Attack of the Werewolves, That's, which you, you lent me many years ago. It's a good film. Yeah, it's like a. The writer goes back to his village, yeah? Yeah, it's like it's got. It sounds wank when people say, "Oh, it's like Shaun of the Dead with werewolves," but it is actually like yeah. that. It, and it, it's, it's not. It's a, French. Is yeah, it French? No, Spanish. German. Spanish. It's, it's incredibly funny. It's not. It's a shame it is Spanish. It's a shame it's not an English-speaking language. Only reason I'm saying it because it would have got more. It would have been bigger. Views, it was, yeah. And it would have been more of a classic if that had been an English. But, if that had been British, you know. But, if you're yeah. not afraid of subtitles, I it's, urge you to watch yeah, it. I, uh, that's Lobos de Aga or Attack of the Werewolves is from 2011. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, you lent it to me on, I think, DVD or, or I watched it with you or something. Mm. Uh, so I've been meaning to go back to check that out. And it, yeah, it's, it's very silly. It's got some dog soldiers comment, um, com- uh, comedy in it as well. I thought that was fun. I watched Wolf with Jack Nicholson, which I think is a great movie. I think that's a great movie. Um, Quite a serious movie. Jack Nicholson is amazing in it. Um, I watched Dog Soldiers. Now, Gav, Dog Soldiers is pro, is is edging from my, one of my top one of my top three, close to being number one werewolf movies of all time. That film gets better with every watch. The, it's like watching Predator for me or Aliens with the action because you forget the action scenes are really well directed as well that whole scene at the end with the barn and the range rover and the fight against the werewolf but then it's got all the comedy in it and the fact that it's werewolves as well and i uh i've never really noticed and i'm such an idiot we've covered this on the show that it's got all these sort of uh, Hansel and Gretel and Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you know, because they find the cottage that's got all the food on the table in it. So it's got all these other layers and elements to it as well. It's just such a good film. Dog Soldiers, man. Um, I really hope they never make a sequel. They're always threatening to make a sequel, but... I had a pirate DVD back in the day. I got off the streets of London. Uh, just stopped very quickly and I jumped out the van and I, uh, while I was working. And I was like, oh, nice. What have you got? And I was like, yeah, I'll take that. <clears throat> and I uh, went home and it was just the blackest thing it was just so dark I couldn't see fuck all <laughs> oh, man. Like, and the sound was all shit and I was like why did I do this oh, <laughs> fuck's sake but yeah that no, was a good film good film now I this there's one werewolf movie I'd never seen before which I watched um, and that is from 1993 starring Patsy Kensit and Mario Van Peebles. What the fuck is this? It's called Full Eclipse. I believe it was Jamie Sammons that mentioned this. Now, yeah, I've it, heard of this. It's like Lethal Weapon meets X Men. <laughs> Essentially, Mario Van Peebles 
partner, he's a cop, and his partner is killed at the beginning in a shootout. But then he comes back, and it turns out he's been recruited into this like vigilante wing of the uh, LA police that inject wolf serum into them and they sort of wolf out a little bit on nighttime missions with claws and fangs and they go in and they rip apart these like drug cartels and then in the morning it's they're like all wolf like cop. it's like a serious version of wolf cop but it's mario van people's patsy kens it and there are all these werewolves are in it and then he's like they're like do you want to join the pack come on mario van people's and he's like man do i do i want all that I power i don't know if you're selling the movie to me or really putting me off i can't Dude, tell it is on youtube it's free to watch and honestly it's cheesy but good and un- unusual and original and i just never heard of it so i always love checking out a new werewolf movie that i'd never seen especially one from 93 and jumping onto that what was that peter cushion movie don't leave me hanging Oh, uh, the Peter Cushion movie that I watched recently. That is The Legend of the Werewolf. What the fuck Nin- is this? What's the name? 1975. Is it Tygon? Just... No, it's not. Hang on, let me... Uh... A lot of people thought it was Hammer, but it's not. Uh, no, because Hammer only ever released Oliver Reed's werewolf film. That's the only werewolf film they did. I'll tell you now what it is. Yeah, well, I know that, and you know that. Um, but, um, hang on. It's also got Roy Castle in it. Nice. It's, not, it's 1975. Uh, it's directed by Freddie Francis, stars Peter Cushing, Ron Moody, Hugh Griffith, uh, Roy Castle, and it is... What studio is it? Tyburn. T-Y-B-U-R-N. Tyburn Films. Oh, right. okay, cool, yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it, it's, it's all right. The werewolf in it is pretty decent. Obviously, it's Peter Cushing. Um, and it's about a, a boy in a circus that they sort of, you know, oh, come and see the wolf boy, come and see the wolf boy, and he bites someone and... And yeah, it's just your usual werewolf film, but um, that is another one I'd never seen actually. Any good? Um, yeah, I, I gave it. I think I gave it like six out of ten. It's not like spectacular. It's but pretty cushion though. Yeah, it's all right. It's worth watching. And again, it's on YouTube. So if you guys want to check that out, um, I'll just round up. I also did um, Bad Moon, which we covered on Jamie and Brian's show, uh, liking it. Which good, good film. It is a good movie, and that's from 1996. Again, the under the is... radar, and I think, like I said before, I think it's because the, the actors, stuff, they don't, I, it's, they're not really... Who are these what, people? What's, Who cares? What's, what's amazing about it is is the majority of it is taken from the point of view of the, of the dog in it who's yes, protected okay. the family, and it's great. And I would really like to cover it on, on our show sometime, actually. Yeah, but we did um, cover it, though, on Jamie's. But I'd like to cover it on our show as well, because I think it's worth bringing okay. to the attention of our listeners as well. But it's just... It's really good stuff. The only thing that lets it down, as a lot of werewolf movies do, is the werewolf or the the transformation. That that can be often be the uh, the, the poor thing. Now, I also watched The Beast Must Die. Now, we love that because it's got a werewolf break in it. For anyone who's never seen The Beast Must Die, a werewolf break. It's a who done it where about twenty minutes before the end um because it's basically 10 people in a mansion and they're trying to figure out which of them is the werewolf and then 20 minutes before the end it goes now it's the werewolf break you've got one minute to tell the person next to you in the theater who you think is the werewolf and you're like supposed to have like been keeping score of who you think it's so fun and they've never done anything like it in any modern movie that i know of (laughs) since really no, funny enough though, um, because of the guy with the long hair in it who lives in my town, uh, is the long blonde hair that actor. Yes, yeah. Um, I bumped into his uh, daughter the other day for, in Sainsbury's, looking walking through the door, and straight away she's like, "Have you finished it yet?" And I said, "What finished what? A Star Wars film?" And she went, "Yes." And I went, soon she goes, "Let me know. I, I will. I will." <laughs> so at some point, I'd love to try and get her dad on the show for an interview, but we don't. We do interviews, and I don't know. I don't know where that fits. And I have been trying for a few years, but it seems to be quite a hard thing. He doesn't act anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, well, he'd probably have some good stories about he being probably in that have, movie. Like, he'd probably great, have some great stories about Beast Must Die. You know. Yeah. Uh, very quickly then, whizzing through, I also watched Werewolves Within, um, which is fun. It came out only in 2021. It's still on Netflix. It's, again, another who, who done it, And it's very funny. Very funny werewolf movie. Um, I watched... What is fast becoming probably in my top 10, and it's quite a new movie, Where, W-E-R, uh, 2013. It's really, really tense, terrifying, and probably the, the most... Is that the one on the train at the beginning? No, that's Howl. 
Oh, it starts that first half is great, and then it's just shit. Oh, Howl is awful. I watched it, starts, it again. Howl starts off okay on the train yeah. journey down, and it stops. Oh, what's happening? Then it just goes shit. I watched that again the other night. Um, yeah, I tried that and long ago. It's about the third time or fourth time I watched it, and I won't bother again. It's just a shame, really. It is. Um, yeah. But where is the most? That's someone who's been interrogated. Yes, so it's the girl from Final That's Destination same. 2. She's a, a, a lawyer, and there's been a, a brutal attack where a boy and a mum and dad were all killed, and they think it's this guy, but the, the animal it looks like animal attacks, and they bring this guy in who's very hairy, he's about 6 foot 10, um, doesn't barely speak, he's got really big hands, and the actor is incredible, like really intimidating, and it's, like I said, it's the girl from Final Destination 2, and she's the lawyer, and she's like, look, you need to tell me what happened, I'm here to protect you, and they start to figure out, like, has he got some kind of form of werewolfism, but like there's a medical condition for it and it really looks into the realistic nature of lycanthropy and could it be real and and, uh, that all sounds really shit but it's not this film is done incredibly well and then halfway through like the midpoint it just goes into a direction where you're like fucking hell and it just gets really really good uh there's a couple of like sloppy bits towards the end but it's done really really well and i really recommend where from uh 2014 actually it was, 2013. You, you reminded me of uh, a co-star of yours dan uh, in the Shadow of Death, Dan Carter Hope, he made a short film which is on telly once uh, called The Third Man, as in F U R R E D, as in the. Uh, oh, yes, I remember. Uh, uh, awesome Wells Third Man, uh, where he's been interrogated in a, a werewolf costume, but he's just got the mask off and he's just sitting there. And uh, I won't say anything more, but that's on YouTube if you want to check it out. It's a little short film. It's quite a good little short film. That's a werewolf short film. Oh, yeah. Completely forgot about that. It's actually, film, that's amazing. It? Yeah. it is. It's very good. Um, and then the last couple, very quickly. Uh, my mom's a werewolf from 1989, which is so cheesy, and jumped on that Team Wolf bandwagon, but it's fun. Uh, two movies which I will never watch again: Wolf Cop and another Wolf Cop. They're awful, really. I <laughs> thought they were good, but that, that's the thing. I remember what, I've never seen another Wolf Cop. I remember the first what, Wolf Cop, just being like really impressed with like the werewolf look, but then being yeah. like, it's a shame it's in this film. Yeah, it's because you get so many werewolf films that are re- like, oh, this could be a good werewolf film. Then it's ruined by the werewolf, and yeah. you're like, oh. Um, then I watched a very short one, Michael Jackson's Thriller, because um, he turns into a werewolf creature in that. Although he doesn't say he's a werewolf, he says he's a were cat in that, which is interesting. Um, little fun fact for you: apparently, halfway through recording the song of Thriller. Michael Jackson started crying because they couldn't get the mix right with the sound engineer. So he got on his bicycle, apparently, and he cycled up to uh, a local children's park and said he sat watching children play for about 90 minutes or so. Then he came back and said, right, I've got the idea. I've got inspiration again. Let's do this. And then they finished making the song Thriller. So I just thought I'd share that little fact for you with you all there. Uh, Last couple I watched, uh, Late Phases. What an incredible film. Again, yeah, let, yeah. Bit of a let, the werewolves let it down a little bit, yeah. but it's great. Uh, Howl, terrible film. I'll be watching Viking Wolf, which hit Netflix very recently, and I've heard it's quite good. Uh, I'll also be watching Strippers vs. Werewolves, The Wolf it's of Snow Hollow. Lot. Strippers vs. Werewolves is awful. I know, I've seen it before. The Wolf of Snow Hollow, uh, which we covered for our Christmas episode recently. Uh, and then, I'm very excited that Marvel have released the colour version of Werewolf by Night. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Which I'll be watching I... on Halloween, along with mm-hmm. my favourite werewolf movie of all time, Silver Bullet. And that's what I'll be finishing on, nice. Silver Bullet for Halloween. And that'll be 50, 49 werewolf movies. Fuck me. Um, I wasn't really into that Disney one. I never made made it all the way through. Actually. Disney, oh Marvel, yeah, uh, or whatever it is on a Disney thing. I'd still like to make a found footage werewolf movie, but I just don't have an idea. <laughs> well, that's why where that's what going back to where is so good, and that's probably going to be that and the Mario Van Peebles ones is probably Van the Van two. Peebles. Oh yeah, I got a bad throat, as you know. You got a Van uh, Peebles throat. Um, that and the uh, Mario Van Peebles movie. Oh, we've got two of like the Van Peebles. Don't make fun of my condition, Gavin. Um, yeah, where but where is the one? It's like it's almost like a, it's like a semi found footage. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those ones. Where, where... Werewolf, 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 Where Castle, Werewolf, Where Castle, Where Castle. <laughs> yeah, check it out. And that is and will be my thirty-one days of werewolves and lycanthropy. 
Exciting, hairy times. You never know on the Halloween night, Alice might turn into a werewolf. A bit looked like that one at the end of uh, Howling. The little cute, fuzzy gremlin. Yeah, you'll be in bed with a little cute, fuzzy Honestly, werewolf. Honestly, having watched this many werewolf movies, it's interesting just how much they shit the werewolf movies shit the bed at the last act when the werewolf is revealed or the transformation is shown. Unless you've got like Rip Baker or Rob Teen, you are... And even then, sometimes it's a bit dodgy. You're like, there's, nah. uh, yeah, yeah. I've either got a credible practical effects, or you've got good camera work. I think for, but for then werewolf you don't show movies, the whole wolf, so it's... I think for werewolf movies, right? So for creature features, it's always the rule: less is more. But for werewolf, you do want to see that transformation. But I think yeah, that still applies: less is more. It's... Try and be as practical as you can. Avoid CGI. Every guns. every time though, you're just up against American Werewolf, so it's like. So that, that's why I'd love to make a foul footage werewolf movie. How yeah. the fuck do you do that? Uh, well, you know, do it from the werewolf's point of view. The werewolf's well, there was got that... a camcorder strapped to his face and couldn't no, get there, off. There, I tell you what, there's that really good um, found footage about a vampire movie where the guy gets bitten when he's on holiday in Europe. Yeah, that, um, that, yeah that's I can't remember for the life of me remember what that's remember called now. That's quite a good film and he gets powers and stuff. Yeah, and, he, and his buddy's with him and he's like, go on, see if you can jump over that building and he starts figuring out, you and then know. Then it goes all work bad. Uh, Oh, I thought I had the name then. Gone. Anyway, should we get on to our show? Yes. So that's Halloween. This is Halloween. I am Halloween. We are Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> well, we're going to kick things off by going back to 1948 with a trailer. For we're going. Ha- we're going to turn black and white ourselves. Yeah, we are. We're already. Look, look at us. My beard's black and white. That's how colour um, gets sucked from me. Oh, sucked from yeah. my colour. Jesus Christ. He just made Bill Murray look round. Fucking he would with his freehold pumpkin. He's still carving it out. Um, so we're going to be going back for a trailer of Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein from 1948. We'll go into that and then we'll go straight into our review of that film. Here's a trailer. And it'll be an old trader, so good luck. Count Dracula sleeps in this coffin, but rises every night at sunset. Chick is right. This is awful silly stuff. Come on, take it all out. The nation's top comics, Abbott and Costello. Petrified, but hilariously. <laughs> Plus the dangerous and terrifying Wolfman, played by Lon Chaney. Plus that fiend out of a nightmare, the vampire Batman, Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi. Plus the most dreaded creature of them all, the Frankenstein monster, played by Glenn Strange. Plus a couple of luscious but designing females in the spookiest laugh fest on record. And we're back, and that was a trailer for Bud Abbott, Lucas Stello, Meet Frankenstein. Now, I'm looking at that on IMDb, Dan and I were quickly discussing this off air, and I'd always class this Abbott Costello, Meet Frankenstein. Now, the reason is, I'm looking at this now, the reason why I've always called it that is because of the large fonted Abbott, large fonted Costello, and large fonted Meet Frankenstein on the poster. The Bud, Lou, and are like 15% of the smaller text. That's why I've always called it that. But also, it was it's more commonly known as Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein these days, over the years. Yeah, and I think from that, though, really, it's easier. It's, it flows better as well, though, doesn't it? Why would you want the rest? Anyway, I'm going back for my old title. <laughs> Abbott and Costello uh, meet Frankenstein from 1948. It's an hour and 23 minutes long. The Wolfman tries to warn a dim-witted porter that Dracula wants his brain for Frankenstein's monster's body. 
Um, 7.3 out of 10 IMDb. That's I, good. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I am a big fan of this one. Uh, yeah, I love my, it. My uncle, who lived over the road for me when I was growing up, uh, literally over the road, you, I could have actually thrown a stone at his house. Um, he had a massive film collection. He's the one who got me to films. It was his 90th birthday the other day. I gave him a card. Oh, I, gave, I gave him uh, the new mm. recent James Bond movie. Uh, for his birthday nice because he's still got a massive movie collection of random movies I've mentioned him before and uh, he would take me over there but I'd be like oh, I'm into horror but I was obviously when I was a kid for me it was mid 80s really I'd be watch, starting to get into horror a little bit it's been about 8 or whatever <clears throat> and but he was showing me stuff like this so he got because he's coming from an old school generation and he's showing me stuff and this is a 1948 movie in the 80s so, but for me, this is kind of my childhood, which is kind of weird. Do you know what I mean? Totally. It's not like it came out then, and I was like a kid in the forties, and it was really funny to go watch a lot of these films. And I got a massive fondness from this. And I watched this before any other Universal film, like before the original Frank, before any of that. So I knew all these people. I knew like Talbot uh, is going to be played by who's played by. I know Dracula's played by who's played by, and they were the original. Uh, actors in them, better Lugosi in that. So um, I don't know. This this is the OG Universal film for me. So this is your first one. That's an interesting gateway into it, and I think you know I can see why that would be. And a gateway into horror. I reckon this is probably one of the first horror films I watched. Well, off the back of that, I would say that part of the reason for that is it feels like a bit of a live action Scooby Doo. Yeah, uh, and, it, and it Scooby feels, Doo is certainly a gateway for a lot of us into horror. It feels safe because Abbott and Costello are safe. Yep, you know, you, no you, one's going to get you, blue, not Bruce Lee. really, and you've got really like the I'm going to say Tubby, a, a, a fatty guy. I ain't saying that because in the movie that he's that they joke upon his weight in certain ways. It's quite old school, obviously. But him and then his mate, who's a little bit ooh, 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 taking the piss out of her all the time and clipping around the ear, sort of thing. And and because you have that interaction in play, there's a real safety to it. You know that they could be all right. They could probably take care of themselves if they have to. If they had to have a little punch up, they probably could do it. You, you know, I don't know. I'm really, well, the, really big fan of this film. There's a couple of other things that I would comment on here related to what you've just said. Uh, firstly, um, it's got a very carry on movie feel which again you and i and a lot of people our age grew up watching in the uk yeah yeah uh and, and our, our you know our us listeners or other listeners would know of the carry on movies but there's a real simple childlike silly slapstick and that isn't a bad thing style to this movie and all of those sort of carry on movies and stuff like that and it, it makes it really accessible to both children and adults and the fact that it crosses over into the universal horrors it, you know is fun for people who know those movies uh, and like you said it's a great gateway for children to get into the other thing i like about abbott and costello is there's a real you know they're a, they're a classic duo not not many people have heard of them, and we will. I will briefly give everybody just a brief yeah, overview I've of their career D- in a moment. I've got a DVD box set of those actually, all the little things they get up to. Yeah, not many people would have heard of them in the UK. You probably would have heard of Abbott and Costello, but you know, and I'll, I can't, I'll come back to their career in a moment. But what I like about them is, as you said, there's a straight guy and there's a funny guy, which you get in all your. Um, your classic duos, whether it's the two Ronnies, you know, and all that kind of stuff from the UK and in, all over the world. Yeah, one of them's but, a, one of them's a joker. One of them's a more business type. Yeah, and it, what it, they party, remind me of at the back, business at the front. Do you know who they remind me of? They really remind me of Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. Yeah. Whenever, and especially this time around, but whenever I watch them, they always remind me because you've got the Dom DeLuise can style, we, chubby. Can, we AI, can someone it. AI that film for us? Can we have this film, but black and white, Bert, Bert and Dom, like in it? Can you imagine? Like the Cannibal Run style. Oh. But yeah, so there's all, there's all my reasons Bert why. Bert would be like, why are you getting all the ladies? I'm the player. Yeah, exactly. And th- this would be, you know, and I'd love to see that with the Dracula coming out of the coffin and, yeah, you know. That'd be, that'd be funny as fuck with Dom DeLuise. Um, so, but yeah, so those are all my reasons why I can see a young Gav loving this. Now, I didn't I didn't see this as a young kid, I don't think, anyway. Yeah, I actually, I, uh, yes, I don't mean, imagine many don't kids... I was on TV. Many think, kids yeah. are, like, shown this from their uncle's film collectors. Like, I like horror, and he's like, hmm... 
I probably would have seen this you know, 20 years ago, maybe even less than that. Even in the 80s, the, the people weren't going to watch this movie from 1948, you'd like. And I sat there going, yes, and loving it. You know, yeah. And I have a massive appreciation for black and white films. But what we're saying is, guys, you know, there's a lot here to love. If you like Carry On movies, or you like Slapstick, or you like Universal Horror, or Scooby-Doo, all that kind of stuff, this has got it all for you. And, and although... That, it's dangerous like to Scooby say. Dude, this has got it all for you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, although, although saying all of that often means it's probably a shit film. This isn't. This isn't a shit film. Uh, it's a short film as well. It doesn't like stay its welcome. It is essentially a series of silly sketches and, and scenes, but there's a good plot to it that ties it all together. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a. I really like the plot. Essentially, all of the monsters are gathering together, a bit like in the Monster Squad. And the goal is they want to take uh, Costello's um, brain and put it in the Frankenstein monster because he's so thick and dumb that they figure... Yeah, it puts, why it'll work out. I, I was for thinking, it. why don't you get a really intelligent person? Why do you want to... Because Dracula wants a really docile. malleable, docile slave, basically. Yeah. Um, so you've got Dracula and you've got uh, Frankenstein's monster. And then Wolfman is the one that's showing up going, Abbott Costello, listen to me. Um, well, let, we're getting to it, we're getting to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to break down the basic but, plot, really. Which but is like, like, I said, I was going to watch this and stuff for the podcast with chatting with Sarah. And she's like, I'll probably write because she's not a fan of Hubie Halloween, which is fine. We'll get to that. But she's like... Um, I probably won't watch that either. I don't think she'd really sort of go towards this movie. Um, not really for her. And I imagine there's a lot of people out there who would be like, this is not for me. I, I, I love it, but I was it brought brought her up with it. So. It's a it's a cosy afternoon film, isn't it? Yeah, you know? I think you've got to kind of be into the Universal films and be happy with a, a, a light hard slapstick. But, but at the same time... Uh, in my notes, I've got a point where I'm saying, like, if I took Ab and Costello out of this film, it's a straight seri- straight film. It's a straight horror movie, which is quite a good film, actually, because you did have the crossover movies. Yeah, and there was, there was the first studio to do that. House of Frankenstein, which you... Yeah, House of Dracula. That's got most of the, uh, the crossovers in it. Frankenstein versus Wolfman, you had all of those. Um, well, this was one of the first to do it as well. Let's briefly give people a quick overview of who Abbott and Costello are. Um, so... Um, Lou Abbott and Bud Costello or the other way around <laughs> um, they uh, first in a shadow of death I thought of this when watching the movie earlier I did the line when someone says about weed and I go uh, and he goes oh it's Bud Bud Abbott and it is because oh, of this film right. Bud yeah. Abbott yeah. so yeah Bud Abbott Lou Costello they got together and started working together in the 40s um and were very popular on TV and on radio, and they were the highest paid entertainers during the Second World War in the world. Highest paid entertainers during the Second World War. Wow. Um, they became really popular and they were really well loved. And I think people loved them because their silly style, slapstick humor, oh. which just took people's minds off of what the hell was going well, on. You I, know? Was, I, I watched it as a child, and a demo, being a demographic of a young child, mm. I loved it, and I imagine other kids would as well as the adults so they've got that whole appeal all right all right age range and they made they you know they started making movies in the 40s um they like i said they did some television stuff and some radio stuff I've but they started got, making their movies. record of theirs actually yeah some records people were buying yeah. it's that kind of stuff you know so they were they were everywhere and their movie career was doing all right um and it wasn't until they made their first horror film or horror comedy called hold that ghost in 1941 that people really started to take note of them and they thought well hang on a minute we you know we both enjoyed doing that we liked the whole because in a horror situation there's some good fun elements like scooby-doo you know where the ghost is behind you and you're like you can really ham it up you with know? horror movies you can play a lot more as an actor yeah than other genres like a and straight obviously, drama. The, way, the way that these two are is that you know that bud is um sorry costello is always scared of everything and worried and then bud's like nah 
I did, there's nothing here. There's no ghosts here. Come on, what are you talking about? So it always works really, really well. Well, like I say, they made Hold That Ghost in 1941. Um, then they made a couple of other ones. And they, their biggest ones were, obviously, Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein, this one. Uh, Abbott Costello meet the killer, Boris Karloff, in 49. Then they did yeah. Abbott Costello meet the Invisible Man, yeah. meet the Mummy. Um, I think that was... Uh, they did Abbott Costello go to Mars... There's a, there's a good one when I go to London um, and the, the police, uh, the wolf man's like in the police. Which one's that? Let me find it. Oh, is that the, the Meet the Killer, Killer Boris Karloff, isn't it? Was that not that one? No, I'll look for it. You keep talking. But essentially, they had all these um, universal actors, you know, coming to it. Lon Chaney Jr., Boris Karloff, Vincent Price popping up. Well, it was great. And weirdly... And Gavin and I were talking about this off air. Weirdly, Universal kind of saved Abbott and Costello's careers because they were going on a bit of a decline. But because they did these horror comedies, particularly the Universal crossovers, that made everybody take notice of them. And they got a lot more work for a few more years after that because of that. Weirdly, though, because obviously 1931 is what kicked off the Universal movies with Dracula, they were they were on the decline at the same time as Abbott and Costello. So they assumed, look, we'll use Abbott and Costello to really make ourselves popular again. But sadly, people saw them as selling out a little bit. Mm. And their serious horror movies that they'd done, they were turning into silly you know, comedies by chucking in Abbott and Costello, who were the popular actors at the time, the popular comedians at the time. And sadly, the last few movies they made were all of those Abbott and Costello movies. And the last movie they made was the third Creature from the Black Lagoon movie, which flopped big time in 1956, and Universal closed their doors. So, weirdly, these these movies they made together, Abbott and Costello and Universal, off the back of it, Abbott and Costello did great, their career blossomed even more and the universal just were like mm, you can't you can't do it anymore we're just closing our doors yeah so yeah <clears throat> there we go but, that's the, at the end of the day though everybody's got to have their fucking uh, be like cool i've done my thing that's well cool, let's, let's be honest gav universal went from 1931 to 1956 so 25 years of horror they put out in a in the early part of the century well, that's incredible like, like Blumhouse, you know, they uh, saw that uh, they know that there's a market and that you can work in that, and like, it, it helped them. It, it brought them back. The original Universal film was brought them you know, back from when they were dead as well. Universal, they were fucked. Universal changed not just horror; they changed film. I can't but think what that film was, by the way. I think it they was. changed cinema and they changed horror as well yeah, yeah. oh of course because the inspiration would have gone on to make so many other horror films because then when, when Hammer when Hammer Studios came out they essentially remade a bunch of the Universal ones but put their own spin on it their own British spin on it and you know it's just the way it goes really but yeah so without those those early movies with Boris Karloff and everybody else Lon Chaney Jr yeah and that is where we're at that is where we're at so that's who Abbott Costello were that's what Universal's up to and we're here to discuss Abbott Costello, meet Frankenstein. Now, do you remember your first time you watched it? Uh, was about 15, 20 years ago. I can't really remember. Now, I felt, watching this film, that, that it's the same comparison for me as the Monster Squad, as in how good the monsters look as a combined effort in a film. Monster Squad, the monsters in that look fucking so good. You're just like, we could have watched any, we could watch a werewolf movie, just wanted a werewolf in it from this, any of those monsters in that. Same with this, all the monsters in here look great. Yeah, Wolfman looks great. Very, very impressed. Um, I love the opening of this. We started to open up on a foggy London. Sinister music plays as a classic werewolf. Long Cheney Jr. is standing there, and as soon as you see him, for me, he is the he is the uh, the quintessential classic old school black and white American werewolf character. Is is old uh, Long Cheney Jr. Um, playing Lawrence Talbot, uh, um, Talbot, which is uh, the classic um, Talbot from the original Wolfman. Uh, yeah, fam- uh, family. Yeah. So it's basically reprising his role, and I loved it for that reason. Is that the same as Bella Lugosi plays bloody um, uh, Dracula, Dracula, and you've actually got Glenn Strange playing the monster as well. 
Yeah, so they did really well to bring these guys back. And that they all did it. But I know uh, at this point, Bella Lugosi is probably, you know, in his fair share of having issues. Because I know of dependency on drugs, um, things like that. You know. But he did. He does a great job of not looking he's, too much older. He's good in this. I actually thought he was really... He, he does a great role of not acting too much and not acting enough. I think he did perfect. Considering he's in a comedy and he's a very serious yeah, actor, yeah. Well, th- well, everyone's playing it straight. Even Abbott and Costello essentially playing it straight. Yeah, that's what makes this work. Yeah, what makes this work. Yeah, even though he is an idiot, he's, it's like same Shaun of the Dead. It's a comedy, but it's still played straight. Yeah, and there's some great scenes with Bela Lugosi where he does something very unusual, which is he puts his uh, cape over his nose and mouth and covers, so you only really see his eyes. his eyes. And it looks great, and I'm sure some of that was to cover up maybe the way he looked on set that day and whatever. Uh, it but, is also a classic Dracula. But um, apparently he was a real asshole on set, Bela Lugosi. Well, that's uh, why I go back to what I was speaking about. He was really saying, you know, we, we shouldn't be making fun of these characters. We shouldn't be yeah. doing that. But he still took the money and made the film. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> so. probably desperate to... He, yeah, I can see. He's coming back from, I oh, was the one who brought fucking universal back with dracula yeah, yeah, totally, totally. i was the first one like, i did this i'm the fucking daddy look at me we shouldn't be taking the piss out of this but at the same time it's like yeah but we gotta make some more money studios are doing it for a reason as well you know they know there's a new market out there and you can't keep with the same all the time you have to have change don't oh. you dan you do and there is someone who we will mention right at the end who has a little cameo as well which is fucking awesome um and that is vincent price uh just a voice cameo at the end as the invisible man which is great that he he jumped on this as well and was like yeah hell yeah i'll do that i'll just say two or three lines yeah, at the yeah. end no, it just the bring, cigarette it, it gives it a nice uh, it's a nice little bit of icing on your cake at the end oh it just makes it even the last like, bite is still quite nice it gives you because the film ends and it's all silly and nice and happy but the, that makes you smile even more yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a that little joke made, to it yeah the only thing that would have made me smile even more is a rap song over the end credits describing what the plot of the film is. You know I always love that. By Vincent Price in his kitchen while he's mixing up a, a cake bat, a cake mix. Yeah, with Drew Barrymore. And I'm mixing cake mix in the kitchen, you know, whatever. And the werewolf man is truly bitching. So he's, he's trying to make his phone call uh, along with Cheney Jr.'s in his hotel room. We're like, what's going on here? And he tries to make a phone call. We cut to America and we meet Abbott and Costello. And if you don't know him already, we soon decipher that uh, um, old uh, Costello uh, play Willowbur Gray as long as Lou Costello, the shorter of the two, shall we say. The stouter of the, the two. The stouter of the two. And um, then uh, he's a Bud buffoon. Abbott. We oh. essentially know he's a buffoon, and his mate uh, is just basically takes just just rude to him all hates the time. Him. Really, just hates him. He and the, actually, and I, and I do like Abbott and Costello, but I've always disliked Abbott because I always feel sorry for Costello because he's so mean to him. He's like, "Come on, you fat, I, ugly loser!" I, I was let's wondering get going. if we were coming out of a depression. I suppose we're sort of coming out of like uh, like I suppose World War Two was still yeah, yeah, World uh, War imminent II. Um, because. When the dude comes to pick up it, who owns the house of rats comes to pick up his is just to inquire about his his packages at the company, he is fucking is like he has not been laid for probably six seven years. He is fucking angry. Like where are my packages? Yeah. What the fuck? What 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 is up with you? What is your deal? Like what's going on? You know. Yeah, that's uh, Mr. McDougal. Mr. McDougal. Mm-hmm. So essentially, yeah. so essentially, Mr. McDougal has the House of Horrors exhibition opening, uh, and he has had sent over to him Frankenstein's monster's body and Dracula's coffin, which he hopes that Dracula's corpse is inside of, to display within his House of Horrors. What a mentalist! <laughs> What the fuck have you flown those over for? If they're real, you're condemning everyone in the US to pain, suffering, and vampirism because it's just insanity. Like, like, really? Um, before we do get to that, we will get to that. Uh, we find out that uh, old Luke Stello, the, sh- the stouter guy uh, of the two, as we we're saying, uh, has Sandra, who loves him, but does not understand. 
uh, uh, how he can have people fancy him. He's like, yeah. how, how does everyone fancy Lou? Well, like, she and she it. is in. She's hot as well, and she's, she's so right. into him. And she's like, "You're so. I love you so much." And he's just like, he's like a cartoon character. He's he, just like, he as soon bump, as she walks off, he, he spins his around like. Uh, he bumps it. Yeah, he bumps his head. She's like, "Oh, how are you?" I'm sure he says at one point, "My poor werewolf head." It's a really weird thing he says. I've never understood no, he what says, he says. No, he says, my poor widow head. Ah, Whittle. My widow poor head. widow head. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, Bud just doesn't understand the love of affection. He's just like, what, what's wrong with you? The whole time pushing him in front of the daylight. I can't see. What, what can they see? Bud's not got a girlfriend. Probably hasn't had one for a while. Bud hasn't got a girlfriend because Bud's a dick. Yeah, he's really annoyed. And Lou just goes to show, doesn't matter what you look like, if you're a lovely guy, a sweet guy, it, and a very it, happy, positive guy, you'll get girls. But to be or fair... Or boys, or whatever you want. I reckon guaranteed women would rather be with Lou than Bud. Bud, I'm not making love to you. you know, yeah, who I... would you rather go for a few beers with? Lou or Bud? Lou. Yeah. Fuck yeah, all... Fun but time. If you went out with Bud, you'd be sitting there with Bud, not saying anything, saying, do you play darts? No. Oh, there's a dartboard there. Then you'd be like, what's Lou up to? He can't come out. Oh. All right. Look, why does everybody want to be friends with Lou? For God's sake, I don't understand what the attraction is. Then, then so fucking right, McDougal would come in. I'd be like, oh, God, McDougal's going to sit with us now. Um, but yeah, no, so he doesn't understand his love affection which is going on. And we I love do... the fact he says to him, why don't you go check yourself out the mirror? And uh, Lou responds with, why should I hurt my own feelings? I know. Why do I want to hurt my own feelings? Well, this, this scene with them, work, so they work in a hotel, uh, they're porters receiving packages, and this scene really sets up the kind of comedy we're going to get, which is a lot of slapstick suitcases falling on people's heads, slipping on banana skins. It's that Tom and Jerry, we know what we're in for, and we go with it because it was 48, yeah, the, the bit and it's where, brilliant. The bit where he's standing on that big crate going back and forwards, is he in leg braces, Richard, stuck to the crate? I think he must have been, yeah. Because that's amazing. yeah. It looks really, it's a really good stunt, actually. I was really impressed. Guess who is going to be in charge of Frankenstein's monster's body and Dracula's coffin with the corpse inside of it? When those packages arrive, of course, it's going to be Bud and Lou, Abbott Costello. So, well, 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 before we get, uh, get to this, though, the phone call does eventually get through. Uh, doesn't it to, yes. to, uh, to and it's long, long and, and he's like junior. and they're like oh this is we collect uh, we take a call from London you got to remember ladies and gentlemen boys and girls um, this is before mobile phones this is before where we could just jump on fucking Skype or whatever and make a, a call to someone in the world for free and look at them like Dan and I are right now uh, this is when it would cost a lot of money to make a phone call, and you'd have to go through someone who'd have their job sitting there going, I'll patch you through, hang on, it might take a moment, and it would take a while for the phone it to go through. And uh, this is basically in back to London. We've got old Lon Chaney in his hotel room, frantically trying to make a phone call. He makes a phone call, gets through to Lou, and he says, Have oh, you the guys who have got the packages going to the, the uh, Wax Museum? Because he's basically like... Once he's hunting, essentially he's he's Van Helsing. He's hunting yeah. Dracula um, because he knows Dracula's got the mummy, uh, Frankenstein's mummy, Frankenstein's Frankenstein's mummy, Frankenstein's creation, <laughs> his monster, and um, uh, and Dracula's going to use it, put a brain into it, and I don't know, do some do some take over America, do some havoc. And he's like, right, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm taking over from Van Helsing. Well, he I'm said he's been him. hunting him. He's been tracking him for, yeah, it's for cool. years. Yeah, I kind of it's like, really I would, cool. I would like to see that film. I'd like to see a werewolf hunting Dracula. And he says to them frantically on the phone, and obviously he's talking to bloody Lou, who's just going, who, what, what are you talking about? And then he starts going, ur, 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 ur. and he's like, he says a bit where he says, have you put your dog on the phone? Why is your dog and barking he barks at me? back to him. And, it, and he says, God, it's a lot of you're wasting a lot of money if you've called all the way from London and, and you decided and to let me talk to your dog. Growl at me for God's sake! Yeah, uh, uh, but basically he starts wolfing out. The last thing he manages to say is, the, the, "There's a full moon here in London tonight. I don't have long because there'll be a full moon there soon as well." And then he wolfs out. And it's the classic. Uh, 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 basically, uh, they do a still shot. They apply more makeup. They do another still shot. Apply more makeup. Then they put cross dissolves over all the shots. So it just seamlessly slowly changes right in yeah. front of your eyes 
And I do like the look of Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. I do like that look. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's it. So he, Costello's like, oh, that was weird. This guy said, you know, to look out for his two greats. That's weird. And, and Bud's like, whatever, we've got loads to do. Let's yeah. get going. And then we cut back to him and he just starts ripping the room up as well. Then we turn and cut back again. And there's the, the, the very, 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 very angry Jesus. McDougal. He is angry. Well, he's, he's stressed because he, his new exhibition is opening, the Haunted House of Terror, Stress. or whatever it's called. That dude's having a heart attack before he has any enjoyment in life. And he turns up at the, and he says, well, have my packages arrived yet? I'm waiting on two huge packages. And if they break them, which I know you two buffoons probably will, if you break them, I will be suing you all. I'll have your jobs. And it's like, hang on, whoa, whoa. We don't it's even know just, who the fuck you like, are, mate. Stop taking coke early in the mornings. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Was there coke in 1948? Probably. Oh, of course it was. It's been coke for us fucking old school cavemen used to coke out. I'm sure. <laughs> Coke out. Coke out cavemen. That's new. That's the movie I want to see. I want to see that. Cocaine caveman. Fuck cocaine oh, bear. I want cocaine, cocaine caveman. caveman. Fighting a T Rex. Come on! <laughs> wow. Copyright. We're a, we're a fucking can of Stella. <laughs> Why's he got a can of Stella? <laughs> uh, time machine. All oh, they could do is send one, ba- one thing back and they chose a can of Stella. <laughs> Great. Good stuff. Strong, strong brew. So um, the man arrives, like I said, uh, for the crates and, you know, the House of Horrors, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they take the crates to McDougal's place. The reason they take them there... Yeah, well, well very quickly, we, we have the info dump of what they are. With, we have uh, uh, Lou's, Lou's love interest again at the desk and he just says, do you know what I've got in there, miss? <laughs> Angrily says to the woman next to her and she's like, I have no idea what. And he goes, Dracula and Frankenstein. And like, what the fuck? I'd be like, step away. Step yeah. away. You're dangerous. So he tells Sandra... He gives us an info dump. Yeah. What what they are. And um, and they've got to take the crates, basically. Uh, they're just literally like, accept the crates, deliver them to the place. That's their job done. But well, The reason they have to take them there is because they cracked the wood a little bit and he wants them to unpack it and make sure that there's nothing and broken inside. He's already... Like, he, I think he already rehearsed these lines at home. Cause he's like, and I'm going to have an insurance person there on the site to make sure that nothing you know, happens and they can see it first, first hand. It's like, wow, calm down. So we get that classic Scooby-Doo scene now of this... Also, this. So very quickly, sorry to cut up, I cut you in, but when he speaks to the lady and gives the info dump, he then does slip in there. He says, I was just pulled out of a name, pulled out of a hat, out of thin air, and the person rang me up, I got these dirt cheap, I did. I don't know how they got hold of me, sort of thing. So, oh, so like Dracula, basically, he's rang him up. Yep. I am not Dracula. Would yeah, you I'm, like to buy Dracula? I'm Dr. Acula. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, later on, Dracula is a doctor in this, isn't he? has got he? a name in this. So I assume it would be Dr. Acula. Yeah, or Dracula backwards, a la carte. Yeah, but, um, but he is a doctor in this later, so it's got to be Acula. Yeah, he's called like Dr. Bob or something. So we know, uh, we know that, we know that, and it's going to go to this wax museum, and that's where we're going to be cutting to next. Yeah, so we get the classic Scooby-Doo scene now where there's lots of waxworks of, you know, hunchback and skeletons and things like that. It's a straight radar. As soon as we descend on the place, it's like... Yeah. Lightning and all this shit. And it's being the perfect. big Freddy cat he is, essentially he's Shaggy and Scooby combined. Lou Costello is sort of like, Whoa, what was that? Whoa, what was this? Whoa, what was that? And Bud's like, for God's sake, we just got to get these packages unpacked and get back. As soon as we get this done, as soon as we can get back to just the hotel and then have the evening off. Come on, come on, let's get this done. Let's get this done. And he says, right, I'll go off and do this thing and I'll leave you here to unpack Dracula's coffin. So he's so scared. He's, he's not into it at all. So he's like, oh God. So he's, he said, what's that logo on there? Oh, it's Dracula's crest. Uh, yeah, and he goes over and he, he finds this little note thing, just basically, literally like what I saw last week when I went to the Dracula experience um, at Whitby. I, I forgot to say that, actually, really good. All based on the Bram Stoker movie, which is quite cool. Um, had some, uh, the whale flies out at you, but we, it, I was waiting for it to happen. It didn't happen. It was really annoying. Huh. I know. As I worked around the corner, it Did descended. Did you say it werewolf? never extended. I never had an extender. It's just descender. Did you say werewolf? The, Where? the where was uh, there? 
was a what have I got? <laughs> Stop it. Right. Yeah, and he, he sits he, there. He reads, he I reads love it the by description candlelight. of Dracula. He sits there by candlelight on a coffin, uh, uh, just reading this just the whole thing about Dracula, what he is. And it's like the perfect atmosphere. And then all of a sudden... Yeah, the coffin slightly opens, a little hand comes out. And he, but so of course, happens, he stops and looks and up. And then he turns back and looks back and then it's shut again. It's very like, you could make a stage show of this, a pantomime. It's yeah. very like, ooh, it is, it's it is behind like a pantomime. you. Yeah. And obviously a couple of times Bud will pop back into scene and say, what's going well, on? Because he starts screaming. It's basically the boy cried uh, wolf. He starts screaming all the time. Ah, get back in there. Get back in there now. And he'll run back in and he'll say, what is it? And the, the coffin's yeah, empty. Yeah, yeah. And there's this great moment where Dracula actually climbs out of the coffin fully. Yeah. And then while they're, while they're like talking. A wax. And then he stands in the back like a wax for it. And they look yeah. around and they're like, well, there's, the coffin's empty. I told you, you were worried about nothing. There's and then nothing he creeps here. back. It's like, he's just like, Dracula's just he's like. He's just winding them up. He's just like, I'm just going to go back again right now. I'm not even going to wait till later. And it's like. Did, did he plan this? Because, like, surely if everyone was there all of a sudden opened up, was he just going to hypnotise everyone at once? You know. How, well, what, what was the plan? Now it's time to open the second crate. Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein's monster, which freaks him the fuck out. And he wants I mean, to scream. the first thing it, they it, find it, is it, the face sticking it, out of it. It would freak me out, yeah. Yeah, it would freak me out too. So they see the face, it freaks them out. But just as they start screaming and he says, oh, oh, this is too scary. What, what are you doing in the dark? And the angry McDougal turns up with he the investigator up. in the background. So Lou's, Lou, uh, um, Bud's like, well, I'll go check him out. Stay here. Don't move. And of course, this is where Dracula hypnotizes yeah. Costello or yeah. Wilbur. Brings and- Frankenstein back with a electric to the it's really great how to he does the little that. sockets at the side of the neck that's little, really great like a ring. I, I really feel like monster squad took quite a lot from this didn't I, it I, yeah 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 it's great and I'm, I'm you know that's not to not monster squad monster squad is an incredible film but i just didn't realize how much they were homaging films like this but you know it's great good stuff M- monster squad should be better than it is that's the problem with monster squad it should be better it is okay even though it looks incredible and it's produced amazingly, it's only okay, really. There was a lot of issues with that film. Uh, yeah. They didn't. They didn't know how or who to market it to. I think. I think because we've covered it. We have, but it and also came out in a year. Yeah. It also came out in a year when there were some incredible films, and it came out not at Halloween. Yeah. It came out in the summer, I believe, and people were just like, "What is this?" It's done incredibly well since. On it was great on VHS, especially in the UK. In fact, the UK is one of the biggest um, well, places it's done well. Say like Disney Channel, like, if they just dropped that on, you know, on the Star bit on Disney, if they just dropped that on there, everyone would be fucking loving it, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, totally. They probably yeah, but then they'd end up making a fucking series of it now. <laughs> then there'd be a remake, oh. and then a TV series, and then anyway, the universe. Well, Frankenstein wakes up, or his monster wakes up, and he says, for the, by the way, guys, for the sake of this review, I'll probably just call him Frank or Frankenstein, because I know he's not Frankenstein, he's the monster. But he wakes up and he says, Master. Mm. So Dracula and Frank leave. Um, what's quite funny here, and a bit rude, really, is that Frank Frankenstein jumps when he sees wilbur because he's afraid of wilbur which is so basically saying he's chubby and ugly and it's me no it's because it's an actual human so he's afraid nah, he it, kind he's of afraid of humans as well though. i think he's afraid of humans though really but dragon's like don't worry about that so the investigator comes in and that and then all of a sudden they check the bot and they're like there's no craze and uh old um bud's like well yeah but there was none we we o- we were here we opened them up there's nothing in. So, and it's just like right that's it we're getting and the insurance guy's like well we're not gonna pay out until there's a proper investigation so he's like right that's it we're going to the cops and it's a bit like hang on look around what have they done with the bodies what do they want to do with dracula and frank's body I assume he's going to go you're going to sell them to someone else because they're worth a lot of money but it's it's just why didn't you follow them with you the whole time what, what? i don't know the guy uh- is just such a dick while a lot of this goes on, Wilbur is stood there like a statue because he's been he's, sort of he's still like hypnotized or mesmerized yeah. by Dracula. But he comes around in the end and he's like, Oh, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, then we see quite a good effect of a bat flying towards a castle. It goes to a, the window of a laboratory in there, and it, it's, it's quite good, sort of cartoony it's, effects. It's the, uh, the, 
animated bat, isn't it? We didn't actually talk about the animated intro, did we? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of animation in this film. So yeah. uh, there's an animated intro, which kind of straight away, that does give it an appeal to children. Yeah, and a lot of the Carry On movies had like an animated intro, didn't they? And that, that wasn't definitely supposed or, to be for children. Or the, um, the Pink Panther movies, and that's again something like this This yeah, would yeah. have influenced the Pink Panther movies, you know? That always confused me as a kid, because I'd want the cartoon and I'd be like, what's this strange French man doing <laughs> weird for falling downstairs? I Why don't is he understand. fighting this Chinese guy? I've, been trying, I've got the, up at Sarah's on my like, side of the bed, I've got like a little cupboard, with, well, a little chest of drawers things next to me, and then I've got in it my box set of of uh inspector Pluto and yeah. saying come on we could watch them one day and then just never get around to it because she's not seen them so we're good so, uh, we're not. so it's an animated bat but it's how they do it basically they do a bit of animation to it uh and, it, it, and the bat's looking in the window for us to so we know what's going on and there's a lab yes at, in this castle so it's very classic frankenstein's really isn't it and uh, then the animated bat uh um uh changes to dracula and it kind of had a, like a creep show vibe to it, where they'd go in and out of episodes uh, stories on creep show that's true well yeah, who I, lets dracula in gav well well very quickly i did think a uh, pretty good way to travel if you were a vampire is it's bat. Well, you've got uh, it easy. A... If you're if you're a Dracula, especially, you can transform into mist. You can be a wolf. You what? can be a bat. Uh, what happens though if you're flying along and a bird of prey, eagle, let's say, comes down, grabs you? Do you turn into Dracula so you're like a full, massive person just there? And they're like, "What the fuck?" And they drop you. Sorry. What What do you do to get out of it? Do you turn to mist? Do you turn to a wolf? What do you do? I would. Uh bite it stay as a bat and i'd bite it yeah but if you can't get your neck around because they've got their claws on you you're, you're fucked you've got to change bite it on the leg no nah, you've got to change i all think right. well you've answered your own question there then all right well i needed you to help me do get there to you that go. So conclusion for any of our vampire listeners if well, you're a bat needed to know that or thought about and it. a bird of prey grabs you please transform back to your human form or Just, but then you've got to be quick getting back again otherwise you're falling yeah. flat to the floor yeah, but you're Dracula. You'd always land on your feet, turn into a mess, turn into a wolf. Like a cat, I suppose. Now, the interesting thing here is that Dracula is let into the laboratory by Sandra. A lady called Sandra. Who is... This is Costello's lady, friend. Oh, I smell a rat. This is interesting, isn't it? Mm. Um, so she's been experimenting with him, and they plan... And, yeah, because Bella's there. As so, as as Dracula's there as his human form, so let's call and, him Bella. And their plan is, she's gone out and she's snagged this old silly tubby fool that she's then. Gonna, I've got the most stupid person ever. So we're we, going to put his brain in Frankenstein's monster, Dracula. And Dracula's now we like, know. good, good. This now we is know what's going good. on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this makes us feel even more sorry for Costello because we thought, oh, this guy's done great. He's got this like hot girlfriend, you know, <laughs> and it's a whole ruse. Yeah, she just wants his brain uh, to put to take it out. So she wants him dead, and she's working with. I does she know it's Dracula, or does she just think he's a professor? I think she just thinks he's a professor, doesn't she? I don't know because she's she's. We're assuming that she and the guy that who's at the castle as well, doing the investigation, are both into bringing back the dead. I think Dracula's lied to them about uh, probably who he is and some of the plan, but they're certainly like. But they know on it's actually for... Frank Stein's monster. So yeah, they're, they're on board for brain removal. That's. Do you think that it's like the dark web? They somehow got hold of it. How did they get hold of each other? The How dark telegra telegrams. The dark pigeon. Yeah. Uh, well, that'd be the Blumhouse's next movie. Who should show up in the next scene? Dark pigeon. But Wolfman Talbot. Yeah. And he says, "Right, listen. Whatever you do, do not open the crates, okay? I've been following Dracula and Frankenstein's monster from Europe." Yeah. You mustn't open the crates. And they're like... Ah, He's always like, just turning problem. up. I love the fact that when they finally go to this castle on an island to pick up one of the girls, because that's where she lives, straight away, like, that's sketchy as it is. But yeah. when they're there, they're just there, stand there. Uh, the phone rings. It's Larry again later on. You're like, fuck it. They must be like, there's not that many phones in the whole place. 
How come? How, how? What is it? You? How are you here? You know? Well, he checks in. Talbot checks into the hotel that they live in okay. and work in. Gives him info dump. Tells us and what's like, going on. Yeah, I've been following them. Blah blah blah. He gets a room listen, opposite them. Yeah, he says I need you. That the, there's a full moon tonight. You got a lot of me in my room tonight. And no matter what you hear, no matter how distressing the sounds might be, do not. Whatever you do, do not open the door. Costello's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that if that's what you want. Whatever you're into is your own thing. So uh, he locks him in, and then he thinks, oh, bloody hell, I need to take his bag back in, too. <laughs> it's like a classic slapstick. Classic. Almost. This is almost like that Indiana Jones bit where he he's going to go back in and speak to Marion, but then um, that guy starts strangling him. It's just it's just something about it that's very classic slapstick. So he, he unlocks the door. He goes back he goes in. in. He goes in. He goes, oh, where is he? I can't find him. He Even says, though there how is a bathroom. He, he says, how did he get out of this whole apartment? Well, and, it's, it's, yeah, you basically got like a living room, a bedroom and a toilet. It's a very big, very expensive hotel, I'm sure. He's been getting, well, he's wolfing out of the bathroom, is not he? Yeah. And I, I don't know why he didn't assume that he could be in the bathroom. And he, well, I don't know why he just didn't open the door when he couldn't knock and Anything. put that bag there and then just shut the door I don't know why he had to go wandering in he's what having a, a dude, super rank what if a dude's there fully naked with a full on boner you what know? if he's doing that thing in the cupboard where you strangle yourself with a bit of Strang- you know? um, it only been 10 seconds but I'm sure he could get going if he had to in that time yep well he goes to leave then he but he's thinks- already turned he's already a wolf man and he doesn't know that the wolf man's behind him so, so, well, every he's step in, of the he's way. in one room and the, ba- the bathroom door sort of opens up onto him and he's just standing there and goes, I wonder how he could have got out. I'll leave him a note. And I love the fact that, that whenever the wolf wolfman's there, the wolfman jumps. He, the wolfman doesn't know if he, he pounces like a cat just and it's just really bad timing. The wolfman yeah. has like the worst timing ever. It's like, right, I'm going to pounce now. I'm going to pounce Where now. Where is this superhuman hey, agility? Hey, I'm pounce now. And the, the music goes at the same time a clarinet are playing as he pounces and then it's like oh i missed him that was a good good clarinet just werewolf yeah thank you and then he goes to leave uh costello and then just as he leaves he thinks oh he's got some uh, tasty looking oranges there i might take one of these yeah and he gets out he gets out and he's like oh then he stops and he goes he might have counted them i might uh, i'll take it back in why would the person have counted them in his hotel room and you think, don't go back in there. And then he goes to go back in, but then he doesn't. But then he does. But then he doesn't in the end. And he goes back to his hotel room. Thank goodness for then, that. Then I started thinking, what does a werewolf actually intend on doing when they're locked in? Yeah, it's always a classic with a werewolf. Lock me up. I'm just going to be here. Sometimes it's all right if you ch- ch- like handcuff me up to this pipe down in the basement, like, or, you know, which we've seen before. But the hotel room or, or America Health London, his idea is stay in the apartment sort of thing well it's not actually didn't know he's going to turn into wolf actually but uh, what is the idea what do you think he's going to do is he going to curl up and have a little sleep is he going to poop in the toilet probably not he's probably going to poop all over the place he's a wolf I just wonder what's actually going to happen if you're like a fly on the wall watching probably just going to the main thing is he's not going to go out and eat anybody we do see what happens he does kind of trash the room so I presume yeah. that's what happens when you're a werewolf in a locked in a room well Wilbur continues messing about and telling Bud, like, look, listen, I definitely saw something in that museum, in, in that you know place, in those crates. I saw the Frankenstein monster. I saw Dracula. Obviously, he doesn't believe a word he says because he's, you know, the slapstick comedy. Doesn't believe us anything that he, he's telling him. He's like, well, what think, whatever you think, I don't care because I know what I saw. That's the. He's, I think his saying is, I saw what I saw, but what I saw is what I saw. And I know what I saw. He says something like that, you know, the classic sort of mm. line. Um, Sandra. How do they get arrested? Uh, I, I don't have it in my notes. I think you're jumping ahead. Can we just... Uh, okay. Sorry. All right, yeah. Maybe it's in my notes as we go through. Um, but Sandra checks in with Wilbur and says, you know, are you still coming on this date with me? And he's like, well, of course, you're the, you're my girl. You're the only girl for me. Don't worry about it until Joan shows up. And she, oh, that's right. Joan bails them out of jail. You're right. How do they end up in jail? I can't remember how they. Because, no, they, they fucked it up, haven't they? They would have, this should have been after they carted off by the Mr. Angry McDougal. He cuts them off saying the police. 
that must have been them arrested. But we've got a scene of them at the hotel room with Lawrence Talbot explaining what's going on, and they're not in prison. Oh, yeah. So they fucked up. Yeah, they got the scenes around the wrong way, perhaps. So I am following the story with you, my friend. I wasn't jumping ahead. No, no, uh, that's fine. No, you're just, right. They've missed it. Well, this new mystery lady, Jane, she shows up that. and she bails them out of jail. Yeah, and, and, and we find out who she is, don't we? And she instantly says to Wilbur, you're the most handsome man I've ever seen. I think I want you. Bud's I want... just like... Bud's like, whoa, 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 what the fuck is going on here? You've got two hot women after you now. I love the fact Bud's name's Chick. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> the funniest thing is, is that this being 1948, there's no chivalry. So Lou's just like, ah, oh, well, I've got to take both of them, I suppose. It, it, well, it, he's not going to pick between him. He's having them both. I find it amusing. He opens up the door and just shuts his eyes because he thinks Sandra's there to give him a kiss. He goes, mm-hmm. and it's basically this other lady who steps in to kiss him. So Bud's yeah. just sitting there going, what the fuck's going on with you? Why do you? And that's where he pulls him to the window and says, let me look at you in the light. Is there something they say I don't see? You know, it's like, yeah. just let, Ch- let, him, let him be. But yeah, Chick, it, it, Chick is extremely jealous. And she's like, oh, do you believe in love at first sight? I'm in love with you, basically. Right. Yeah. Tonight, then, what have you got? I'm going to go get some change and then meet me in the lobby and we go. And he's just like, yeah, no worries. Hang on. You just like, jumped into like a, at least a three or four month relationship line nine there. How, th- you've just met. Well, he's also reminded that the party that he's taking her to is I also the same party he's taking. I think she is Sandra, though. Well, he's also reminded that the party that he's taken her to is also the party he's taken Sandra to. So he's going to take them both brazenly, How? taking both girls at the same time. I don't think he's thought this through. He's got his mate is there is going to be like, well, I'm a complete gooseberry because you've got two women. And uh, he, he just takes them He keeps saying to him. He goes to, he goes to the pick up Sandra and takes her along. Oh, we've got to go pick up uh, Bud's date. We're he picking up say- Bud's well, date. He keeps saying to Lou, though, Bud keeps saying, let me just have one of them. Go on. I'll have, I don't care which one of them. Please, just one of the girls. You've got two. Let me have one. Just one. Yeah. And he even gives him, later on, he gives him a scenario. He says, let's just say that if there's a third girl One girl there. called Mary. And he well, says, you Mary? can have Mary. Yeah, he says, you can have Mary. Why? Because she doesn't exist. Oh, brilliant. Um, so anyway, they pop back in to check on Talbot the morning after the full moon. This is where we find out his tr- his room is trash. Yeah, because they go, oh, we forgot about Talbot. At that point, I was like, yeah, I've forgotten about Talbot too. And uh, and I love the fact that you guys were arrested somehow, snuck out, stuck back in the hotel room. I, 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 weird. I can't believe I didn't realise that. I'm quite shocked by that. Talbot calls the lab, and uh, he says that I think you guys are literally because they pick up and they're in like the laboratory. Um, they're, they're there to pick up the girl. And he says, I think you guys are literally in the house of Dracula right now. I believe that the scientist you're talking about is actually Dracula himself. Uh, no, you don't say that until the phone call. He says you're in the house of Dracula. Yeah, that's the bit I'm talking about. I just said he phones him up. No, uh, no, no. They're at the, they've gone to the island to yeah, pick yeah. up. No, no, because he expl- no, no, because he explains that he's a werewolf now in the hotel room. They trash yeah. the hotel room to find him there, but he doesn't say it until the phone call later on that evening. He rings up, and says, "You're in the house of Dracula. You're in the house of the monster. I need you to go find him." And he reveals what the plan is. He does then, yeah, but that's later. He says, on. "He says Dracula's plan is a brain." Blah blah blah. Yeah. He says, "So what I need you to do is snoop around in the lab." Yeah, See so what you can find out. I like it. They get this dock for this castle, and it, I do like it. It's very eerie and stuff, but they get there. Do you see the size of the knocker on the door? Nice knockers! <laughs> yeah, it was this. It was like, uh, I would say, a steering wheel. Yeah. Boom, boom. It was like, whoa. It was again, a, it was a you good know, big knocker. Again, young Frankenstein, definitely. You know, there's some bits from that taken from this as well. And what I will say, sorry, just to interrupt, at this point, from this point out, and, and probably the whole movie, really, but the set design is incredible, but from this point out, yeah, the, the, the island, great. the castle, the laboratory, the secret That's doors why, and this spinning could walls. Super good horror movie. Take Abbott and Costello out of it, you could have made like a cl- good horror. And again, you can you can see where Hannah Barbera got their Scooby Doo stuff from from this kind of stuff with they, spinning round walls. And, well, they would have grown up on these. 
Yeah, yeah, totally, man. It's so good. Uh, so Sandra is now being picked up, basically, and they got the investigator lady there, whatever her name is. She's there now. So they meet Joan. each other, Joan, and they just go, let's go powder our noses. And they just go wandering off like they've known each other. It's like, at some point, what if you must go like, oh, yeah, that's my date. Now, hang on, that's my date. And how does he get out of it? It's like, you are like you're Tom Cruise. <laughs> More okay. like Tom Selleck. Oh, Tom Selleck. Yeah, it's uh And that's so they... when you get the phone call. And that's when Talbot says And that's they're right. just like, Oh, it's Ted. he goes, who is this? And he says, Oh, oh, it's me, it's Wilbur Gray and he says, I thought I recognised your voice. How, what a coincidence. Surely this Why must be it? shocking. Every time I pick up a fucking phone, I've got Wolfman there. on the other end. Every what time is going on here? You're there on the phone. Everywhere I go, I go, I, I go over water every time. And yeah, over the seas, England to America. Now I'm over in a castle from land on an island. And you're still fucking phoning me. So they sneak around. They find a, a secret lab through a secret trap door. Trap door thing downstairs. They get separated. It looks um, so good, though. That whole staircase but next to the dock. Yeah, with that wall so that spins good. around. Yeah. And then, of course, Wilbur is through the spinning door, and he's on his own, and he, he doesn't is. see what's behind him. And what's that behind him, Gav? Well, it's a, old Frankenstein's monster is just sitting in a chair, and he just stumbles back and sits on the chair. So he's basically he sits sitting on, on his, his lap, lap, like Father then, Christmas. But the way he does, the way he does this... Frankenstein Christmas. The way he does this with no Father words... Father Frankenstein. Listen, the way he does this with no words or anything, it's all done through silent comedy. He looks down at the giant hand, then he looks at his hand, then he looks back at the hand, then he slaps his own hand, then he slaps the Frankenstein hand, and he starts figuring out, this isn't my hand. And then he realises, I'm sat on something very big that's got a very big hand. It's just so funny and done so well. Yeah. His reactions, his reactions are occasionally a bit annoying, but I really, I love Lou Costello, so I would always, whenever he reacts to something in a his little way that he does, I love it. What I do like about this is the fact that everyone's cut back just to like this hallway in his house. We're just, we're just knocking a hallway in what was a very elegant house at the castle. It's a bit not the average, but it's just normality, sort of. You're just there, really though. They're fucking in some dungeon somewhere and a trap door next to a moat with like monsters and shit. <laughs> Where, where, where they should just been waiting upstairs still. So they, they, the rest of the household must be assuming that they're still just there, you know. And what poor Costello doesn't realise is that the further he stumbles into this laboratory, the closer he is to the place where his brain is planning to be removed by everybody that's there. So he doesn't realise he's actually getting closer and closer to the place that his brain's going to potentially be taken out. He stands on the trap door and it spins around to him outside and there's fucking Dracula up top of the steps. There's Frankenstein's monster down the bottom of the steps getting a boat ready or something like he's a new some sort of fucking sailor. Seaman Frankenstein. And, and uh, uh, he's just there going, yeah. ah, which way do I go? Oh my God. And then just spins back round back into the thing again. And it's just like, what the fuck? He it, was just, stay in the lobby. It's a lot safer. It's a very funny scene now with a lot of the room spinning round. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And Bud Abbott doesn't quite see the monsters. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a more does. elaborate and extended version of what we saw in the, uh, in the Wax Museum. Yeah, it's and it like, works. It, it works. works very well. It works. It's, it's very fun. visual stuff and it works really well. But then, so we go back to where they were but originally and they're just literally back to like nothing happened. Like, oh my God, you were just fighting prehistoric monsters from books. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? And by the time they've done all of this, and they've but, been gone for ages, the girls are just still freshening up. They, they have they have powdered they have I reckon cocaine their noses if they're powdered their think noses. That's what they mean by I think their so. Nose. And I love the fact that then they're back there. Then Dracula now, it, old Bella, he's now just Doc Doctor Acula because he comes down as just a doctor. <laughs> Hello, I'm a, not doctor. I don't know what that is. Comes down as a doctor. Hello, Hello I'm Doctor Dre. I'm nice Doctor Doctor Acula. Hello. Just as normal, normal one. But then the ladies just like, I need to talk to you. I can't do this. I can't go on a date with him. That other woman is a private investigator for an insurance company. She is bad trouble. We can't do this now. We're going to get caught. It's all fucked. Jack is like, fuck you. I've got fucking magic eyes. And I look at you with my fucking magic eyes. I'm going to make you do whatever I fucking like. All right, love. Get out there and well, get on that fucking well, date. Well, the, the lady, one of them is Pit Finds Frankenstein's book all about 
and, and realizes the full extent of the plan that's why the, so the women immediately become incredibly suspicious of each other and where they all are in this plan but like you say drac drac sort of sort of like with one little look of his drac. hypnotizing that's eyes that's his cool name isn't it drac. that's his new street name the kids drac. drac's back drac drac's back MC Drac. Funny um, enough, later on when he's standing there mixing up stuff, I actually put down DJ Dracula. I wonder what it'd be like as a DJ. Hello, everybody, look into my eyes. Come on, get down, <laughs> get down. Uh, well, Dr- Dracula shows up in a full on smoking jacket. Chilling. Uh, just hanging like uh, fucking um, Hugh Hefner. And he meets Wilbur and Chick properly, and he's like, hello, welcome, welcome. It's so nice to uh, have you at this uh, little gathering I'm having. And what we realize is that Wilbur is still a little bit under his spell, because he's sort of like, oh, you're a very handsome fellow. You're very nice. It's really lovely to see you. I'm really pleased to be here. And they're like, anyone that's been under a spell is immediately kind of like in all enamored with dracula do you know what i mean is, so, is this what is this in the hallway there or is this later on at the party this is at the party oh at the party he pretty much turns up as dracula he does though he it's a fancy dress party and he turns up as dracula oh, no, sorry this is before the party this oh, is okay. when he's just no, in his yeah, when he comes out, it's just doctor yeah yeah, yeah. and we realize that it, sandra's also under his um spell that's when she yeah and he sucked her blood so this is the first kind of like horror type thing we've really seen really in this now is she's yeah. but you don't see it of course but he sucks her blood um so the, everyone starts arriving at the party and dracula quite, turns up as dracula oh you look fantastic oh thank you very much i've come as kind dracula oh that's good isn't it <laughs> it's cheap um, as shit wilbur and chick uh they meet up with talbot why did dracula was like and then standing there i just cut to as the camera pans to dracula he's standing there and he's in a fucking werewolf costume i'm a werewolf <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking amazing wouldn't it and well, she, she'd be looking at him saying why didn't you just come as dracula you play it well you are actually dracula no i'm a werewolf well, that's because Bud Abbott has got a werewolf mask, hasn't he? He does. And, and this causes exactly some confusion. The same. Him and Talbot are in the same slacks and shirt. Yeah, they're, and even in black and white, you can tell they're wearing exactly the same costumes by chance. So Chinos dear. and like some fucking brown or shirt or something. What's going to happen here then? There's going to be a mix up. Yeah. So they get into costume, these two. Well, well, well Larry especially gets into uh, uh, old old Larry uh, Launch Talbot, especially does, because he turns into the werewolf. Indeed, indeed. Well, that's just a moment. So Dracula arrives with Sandra, who's like, yes, master. Um, Talbot tells them that the Dracula is, the, the doctor is Dracula. The Dracula. The Dracula. The Dracula You've got to believe me. In... That, that man over there isn't a doctor. He's a Count Dracula. No one seems to believe him, of course. Um, and Sandra then says she wants to drink Wilbur's blood so she hypnotises him uh, so she's got some vampire powers as well uh, but thankfully Chick interrupts and they all end up on a bit of a walk in the woods and get a bit lost and they're all looking for Joan because Joan's gone missing and this is where Talbot sees the moon and sort of goes <laughs> wolfs out again so we get quite a lot of wolfing out in this which I like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like his third transformation and he sort of falls over and wakes up as a wolfman under a log and gets up. And then, of course, you know, he looks exactly like Bud Abbott in costume when he's got his Halloween costume on, which causes a lot of confusion. It does. It turns into like a, almost a crowd after them now. It turns into like a witch hunt type sort of thing going on, which is very reminiscent of the original Frankenstein, I suppose. And of course, your friend, Mr. McDougall, is bitten. Mr. McDougal was bitten, and then they find him, and then uh, it's a bad habit finds him. You're all right, I think you've been bitten. And those people crowding around at the party, you okay? He's like, I think I've been bitten. He says, oh, you're lucky. A little bit more now, juggler, you've been done for, someone says to him. And he's like, oh, someone bit me in a werewolf mask or wolf mask. And looks up and says, it was you, to uh, old, old bad habit. And, and that's even- when Lou pops up. And just says, hey, what are you doing, chick? You, you're trying to take a bite out of me. And But then <laughs> the angry guy, McDougal, says, don't listen to him. No, no, do listen to him because he's telling you, he's helping you. Don't listen to him. He's in there, on it. And yeah. then they run off and it turns into a silver bullet witch hunt and it's the drunken fucking people in the bar with their shotguns and the peacemaker going after the werewolf, essentially. Yeah. And obviously we've got a real werewolf out in the woods running around as well. Yes, um, both in the same comical clothing. 
so the party goers chase them through the woods. Dracula chases Wilbur. He turns back into a bat, and he's chasing Wilbur through the woods as well. Um, Chick faints when Dracula. So he finally, Bud Abbott finally sees supernatural evidence because he sees Dracula turn from a bat back into Dracula in front of his very eyes. Yeah. And what does he do? He faints. Yeah. He passes out, which I probably would, to be honest, as well. The foggy swamps are well good. Yes. Oh, it's all it's all fantastic. Really good. You know, and they probably just used all the leftover Universal, you know, sets. But why not? If you've got all that stuff, you know, those those Frankenstein castles and Dracula castles are incredible. So it's the next morning. Lou's been taken away, basically kidnapped, essentially, and Bud's just wandering around, and and old Talbot sees him and says, "Come over here," and into the bushes. And that's when they still got the search party with a really angry McDougal joined with a gun now, hunting them down. Like, yep. it's like, you guys are just so gnarly. All night, you've, all of you have just been hunting down these people who are supposed to bit this person. Like, get the cops involved. Like, what? This is, seems an angry lot of people. Well, we've got the dream team now of Bud Abbott and Lon Chaney Jr. teaming up to go on the rescue mission and they're they're going to go and rescue Joan the dream team they're going to rescue Joan and Wilbur they're dressed the same going. they're dressed the same so they're a little team you know they're going to go in there and they're going to do it Costello's in a fucking stock an actual stock like with his hand uh, hands through and his head through and like clamped so down funny. and Sandra is pretty much in one as well and Frankenstein's just there just like, oh, like just waiting for his little electric shot to get him going yeah, and and really, this is where Wilbur realizes and is told what's going to happen, which is, we're going to take your brain out. She says to him, "You won't be small and tubby anymore, but very tall and strong." And I, great, thanks for that. I know, yeah. and he, he that's where he really realizes, oh shit, this is not going to be good for me, is it really? <laughs> it's like this whole time I thought you wanted some wanted some dick, some some action <laughs> for me. Yeah, you and just wanted just my like, brain. Is that you wanted the brains, the only Literally. organ thing you needed? Is a brain an organ? Yeah, uh, I suppose. Glass yes. all, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if it would be. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Um, where are we at? Uh, oh, yeah, so they managed to help Wilbur escape. There's a whole scene here where we, you know. This is where I thought of DJ Dracula. You got to cut to Dracula out of controls, just doing some shit. So, like, oh, Dracula's doing some shit. This next song's got a lot of bite to it. <laughs> <laughs> now dance! All of you. Look at I my want, eyes and dance. I want to get your blood pumping. Get down tonight. Come on. This next song will drive you bats. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that'd be amazing. I want to see DJ Dark Dracula. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they we're coming towards the end really here. Um, Talbot wolves out. I gotta say, at this point here, I think the film could have probably cut down maybe five, ten minutes. Just cut it a bit. It seemed to be a bit like oh, we're kind of just sort of going they're running, along a bit. They're it running backwards and forwards, aren't they? Doing the same thing. Yeah, I did. Essentially, think, though, I never saw that before because we were reviewing it. I sort of noticed that. Well, essentially, though, they fight Dracula. Uh, Frankenstein busts loose, so he's you know then they've got to try and fight him. Or Dracula fights the Wolf a, Man. A, there's a fight, and and old uh, Lou is still strapped to a bed, and he's basically like ping pong or tennis, going back and forwards with Dracula and the Wolf Man <laughs> using him hilarious. as a ball. Back and forth, so he's on the table going, whoa, whoa. He starts spinning around. And I was looking at that stunt thinking, he must have been sick after that take. I thought it was quite they good. Spun around so much. But imagine, what, like, when you go to bed that night, what did I do today? I had Dracula and a Wolfman use me as, like, a huge table tennis, like, bat and ball on a table. It was the he weirdest does thing. Back and and quite a that's lot. what I did today in my life. Um, Wilbur does a great thing where he pretends to be Dracula. So, um, oh, Lucas Stello, because yeah. they're stuck, they're running from one room to the next. Every room they go into, there's more shit going on. 
the all secret of a sudden you're like Wolfman and Dracula but, smashed through a door in front of you. Like, what but the that fuck? Makes, it makes me laugh so much because although it is quite samey, it's like, right, we're in this room now, and then suddenly, literally, the wall will smash through, and it's it either Frankenstein <laughs> <laughs> or, or, the, or Wolfman versus Dracula. Have fight, a fight, just spill it and you just want it. It's basically Friday <laughs> night after the pub. Don't get involved with those two pissheads having a fight. Stay well away. But everywhere you go, the pissheads seem to get nearer. No, I'm trying to get away from you it's that or Frankenstein smashes through the wall it's so funny yeah um, there's a great shot here where um, it's just they, I d- go on I was going to say when he pull, pull, when Lou pulls the uh, sheet off the uh, table and everything stays there oh, and he breaks the full four and looks at the camera and goes huh and then runs off but, but there's a shot that they left in where uh, Frankenstein so um, Glenn Strange punches through the door and he's supposed to, his fist is supposed to go between Abbott and Costello, who yeah. are on the other side of the door. Yeah. But Lou said his line a little bit too early and moved his head forward. And he actually gets punched in the face for pelt by, by um, Glenn Strange. But he kept going and said his next line. And after they called cut, he was a bit dizzy. But they left it in. And it's like a really funny scene now where he gets punched through the door. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was supposed to not get hit. It was supposed to just punch straight through the door in between their faces. But but Luca Stello moved forward, and like the champion he is, he carried on with the scene, uh, even though he took a massive fist to the face from Frankenstein. So that's pretty it. funny. Oh, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, we we get back out onto the docks. Uh, yeah. They do get down there, and uh, at this point they run past McDougal, who's finally happy. He's probably got. I've been so angry all day. I've been. I haven't slept. I've basically been hunting the person that, that you, you guys who delivered the package because I'm hunting you down because I hate you that much because I don't know why. And they're just like, you wanted your monsters, yeah? And he said, yes, he goes, there they are. I love it. He looks up and yeah. like the monsters, Frankenstein's monsters just walking towards him. Then a complete opposite, doesn't even look like him, stunt double, jumps in the water because I watched a high definition <laughs> copy of this. I watched a high definition. It the guy look, comes out of the water. It doesn't look anything like And he just goes, right. I'm like, that's not him. Yeah, no, you're right. It just doesn't and look anything like then him. The same thing is, I always remembered because uh, I've just, I don't know what it is in my brain. I know, noticed these things and I always noticed as a kid. I was like, that's the same line said over and over. And it says, untie the boat. And then the exact same phrasing, untie the boat. Yeah, and then it says a little bit more, a... come on, untie the boat. Then it says, would you come on and untie the boat? So they had the smallest bit that repeated it. Then they extended it a bit more from the original line. Then they extended it and said the full line. And his mouth. Yeah, I found that a bit quite annoying. His mouth, yeah, because they're trying to obviously tell the crowd what's going on, and because uh, maybe the audience like, I don't understand why they can't get away. Well, that's why. So they telegraph it with this line, and his mouth isn't moving when it says the line again. I'm watching it in high definition. I was like, oh, his mouth's not even moving. Okay. Well, Doctor Stevens, the other guy that was helping with the brain thing, he's had a change of heart. He sets the pier on fire which therefore sets Frankenstein's monster on fire. They row away on the boat, and as they row away, I'll let Gav tell you the last scene from the film. They think they got away and it's all nice and safe, but alas, no. A voice comes from nowhere, then a cigarette is in the air, floating by itself, and we hear the voice of Vincent Price. And I can't remember what, quite what he I says, but something says. along the lines of, that was quite the adventure you yeah, guys yeah, had. Yeah, 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 you're not, you're not alone, I'm here, or whatever it's yeah. yeah, And it's the, the Invisible Man. And, and yeah, like we said earlier, Vincent nice. Price does a little cameo, voice cameo. It's nice, um, it is really nice just awesome. to have that to finish off on. But I, I'm uh, a big fan of this, I recommend this, thumbs up for me. Yeah, absolutely a thumbs up for me. Um, it's one that I've probably, it's probably only about the third or fourth time I've seen it, but absolutely you're right i love it and you know i look forward to showing the kids that when they're a bit older it's it's a live action scooby-doo film that's all i can say really and it's got if you love the carry on movies if you love the, the universal movies you get a kick out of this this would sit so well with carry on screaming you yeah. know yeah yeah absolutely. Could, you could watch those two back to back or even um uh what a carve up you know all these kind of old school movies you could even watch this with monster squad you know you could watch it with that it's just fun it's really fun and yeah thumbs up from me as well and plus they got bella 
they got Glenn Strange, they got Lon Chaney in it, so they, and Vincent Price. You know, they, they, you know, they, they actually got the big boys in this one. Yeah. Good stuff. So yeah, thumbs up from both of us. So that was that was our first review for our Halloween special. Thank you, Gav, for selecting yeah, yeah, no that. One. Uh, do check it out if you haven't seen it. But like, realize that you're going into an old school Universal black and white film. It's a bit tongue in cheek, but don't take it too seriously and have some fun with it. Also, what I would say, the final thing is, but it's not got any of the stuff that you might be worried about that wouldn't pass these days. There's no sort of casual racism or homophobia it's just childish humor really there's maybe a little bit of sexism in it but it, it's fine go and watch it it's fun that's oh, right bit even, of body I, shaming maybe do, as well yeah, I, don't, I don't really think about any of that sort of stuff really um but yeah um check it out it's a good movie now world of strange should we get into this bill are you ready oh my god look at the holes in the pumpkin there's multiple holes now of all sizes I think he's just drunk, to be honest. I just think he's just happy with his drill attachment. Right. Well, let's get into you it. You right to do this? Let's do this. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. Wow. Strange. Strange, it's Halloween. Strange Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. Got a few stories, Gav. Bill. Bill, what have you, so what is this pumpkin hole thing? Oh, he says it's like a Flash Gordon thing. You know, you have to put your arm in it. But, but why, is oh. it, why is it that size? Oh. Right. I don't like this. Is it a f- flesh? Is there a Gordon? scorpion in there? He says it's from Flesh Gordon. <laughs> oh. I don't like the idea of this game. Well, let's get into some of these little. Because I've got a few little stories for this. Uh, this, you know, it's Halloween. World of the Strange. The first one is just a fun one. Just a little fun one for you, Gav. Yeah. So I know you. I know you love AI and mm. bots. I, I'm very interested in AI. Yeah, I that's what I mean. I don't look at it as a negative. Well, I'm interested. So. Somebody put in a very small amount of information into a bot and asked this bot to write an obituary. Okay? I... You... Yeah. You posted this. I got this from you. It's very funny. But for our listeners, it, this is yes, read it. ridiculous. Yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to read this out and we can just laugh as it goes. So don't forget, this is written it's because, by a bot. It's to, to, very, to explain what it is with AI and uh, and, and chat, uh, uh, basically there's a different, there's a chat, D, what's it called, chat? Chat GP, GPI GP, or something? GPT, GP, I don't know what it is. There's a few of them, different ones. And this one's probably the best one sort of thing. You can get it to write what you want to write you can say I oh, would you write uh, and this is basically said can you write this and then you just put in the key <coughs> points so it's going to be the age of the person you give it basic stuff and it will then take that and present it right out so that's basically what someone's going to done and Dan is going to read the outcome of this so this is an obituary so Brenda so this is what the, the bot has written Brenda retired from living at the age of old yep Surrounded by family and natural causes. Yeah. <laughs> a librarian from birth. I'm just surrounded by natural causes. A librarian from birth. Amazing. Like, literally from birth, I can read. Can you? Yeah. Bren- Brenda was an avid collector of dust. <laughs> it's just like, I've got these dust collections everywhere for dated from 1982. She had a sweetheart and married her high school uh, will you take this high school I will I think that's supposed to be a high school sweetheart isn't it yeah and every class for a minute she loved having hobbies I love having hobbies which ones just, just hobbies. hobbies and she loved helping her sons to be disadvantaged youths <laughs> are you fucked yep great good lad she had no horses but she thought she did 
<laughs> just like my horses I love horses mummy I've got any horses I thought I had some the next day I love my horses yeah I've got horses the church some. the church has given her a choir today because she sang like a bird and, and looked like a bird and Brenda was a bird <laughs> Brenda's a bird everybody Brenda's literally a bird and they thought she today sang like a bird because she is a bird she's up there on the podium bah, 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 as a bird right so we're going to give her a whole choir so there's a bird sitting in the living room called brenda with a choir sitting around her just looking at her going what what do you want us to do now sing another song she owed us so many poems she fucking bitch she told her she's going to give she us some, she owes me two told, poems she told she's going to give us a bone she didn't <laughs> And then the final How many part poems? Is, everyone, she owes poems to everyone. She owed us so many poems. The final part of this bot, bot obituary is The funeral will be held in 1977 in heaven. In lieu of flowers, please send Brenda more life. <laughs> wow. Right, give her some more life. Oh. Please, oh. she don't want any flowers. Just send her some life. Also, it's being held in 1977 in heaven. Fucking hell, you having your funeral in heaven. I'm going back in time, and it could be in heaven. <laughs> wow. How'd you get there? Ask oh, the Uber. Where's your destination? Heaven. 77. Is that a club? Good stuff. No. Sounds like house club. It's not. Good stuff, man. It's great. So there we go. So that's the first one. I just thought that'd be fun to read out. So good. Cracks me up. Next one is about um, a little... Scottish clown. Have you heard about what's been happening? No. Okay. Is so it, there's a is it not like what we used to have with those clowns doing the whole sightings. Not really. Uh, so there's a little area in Scotland called Scale Morley, and there is a Pennywise-style clown who's posted a message for the nation, a game he wants the nation to play. A bit like Saul. All right. He's been stalking the streets of this little village and he said, like I said, he's got a message for the nation. He's a masked character. It's a Pennywise style outfit. And he said, I want the whole country to join in with this one. He's been leaving riddles and clues around the village of Skelmorley in Scotland in North Ayrshire to solve. Videos have been uploaded to Facebook and the clowns highlighted lots of landmarks and is saying that people must visit them and take a picture of them at this landmark pulling a scary face. You then need to share your pictures online with the hashtag Scalemorley Clown. Is this a fucking promotional marketing thing? I don't think it is. Right. Um, and he basically leaves this like uh, poem, like uh, of um, instructions of, as to where where you need to go and take your picture. Hang on a minute. It's taking a bit of time to load up the next bit. Sorry about this. Um, but there are prizes as well. And the only person who's won a prize so far is a lady who, she opened her front door and there was a safe, a little safe box outside with a red balloon attached to it in the morning. How did he know where she lived? Well, I think she, I, I don't actually honestly know how he knew that. But inside the safe box was a mirror that said clown on it so when you look in the mirror you see yourself with the word clown over your head that's her prize yeah it's worth it so he's been leaving these messages basically uh, he wants people all around the, the, the country not just Scotland uh, all around the whole of the UK to take pictures of themselves at these different landmarks and yeah, people have been going crazy about it. It's been all over the news. Um, the police are, like, querying... Because one of the places he wants you to go is the top of Ben Nevis. Obviously a mountain. And it could be quite quite dangerous to sort of take a selfie at the top of the mountain. What twats could do it so they could win a fucking mirror? It's a clown. Who the fuck well, could do that? I think there's probably other prizes as well, but that is one of the prizes. Um, I'll see if... Oh, here we go. So here's, here's, his, here's his message in rhyme. I have, a, yeah, so you, I have a message addressed to the nation. I've created a game for the country to play in. Robert Burns Cottage, where the legend was from, the Bannockburn Mo Monument, where our king won. 
in Loch Ness, home to the Nessie, in Falkirk, the horses that go by the Kelpies. I'm not going to read it all out, but basically, each of these is like a little clue to a landmark that he wants you to go to. And at the end of it, he says, all of these landmarks from east to west make up the country we know is best. Your game is simple. At each of these places, take a selfie with your scariest faces. Post it online so your pic can be found, and please use the hashtag ScaleMorleyClown. And he basically, like the police are like, who is this guy? What is he up to? Is there something more sinister? Um, he hasn't really said what the prices are other than this one lady that won this like box with just her face inside on a mirror. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite interesting and it'd be one to watch. <clears throat> yeah, weird. It is weird, isn't it? Uh, it's like, like, are you between... really bored to do this? Well, it's like a cross between that gimp that guy that was going around near me, in a, a village near me, terrorising people in the middle of the night just as a gimp. So it's a bit like that, because apparently this clown sort of creeps around a bit in the village as well. But it, it, it can't be anything there, like like nothing like the, like the cops thing, something sketchy. Like, because he can't be there every place, and it's just going to be whenever, so it's... I just said a I just said a marketing thing, but or someone. It does sound a bit bored. like that, doesn't it? Yeah, I just said a marketing thing. It has to be. Yeah, maybe it's just someone very bored, or someone really fucking bored. Well, that's the scale Morley clown, and I'll if I get any updates and developments on that, I will of course. You if know. people start dropping dead at <clears> these, <throat> these spots, then let me in there. Now, my last two stories have been provided to me by my very good, um, almost best friend, I would say. Longest, one of my longest serving friends. Not you, Gav. You are in that circle. But Robert, who you know, you, you've met him several times. Known him since I was 10. Um, he... <sighs> wow. He sent me two stories. Well, he sent me one story and told me another story. That, something that happened to him two weeks ago. Now, Rob is self-confessed, you know, loves a good moan. He loves it. He doesn't love it when things go wrong, but when things go wrong, he's the best person for them to happen to because he just, he always puts a very cynical spin on things. So let me tell you the story that he told me of what happened to him. Rob lives near a beach, so he often takes him, his dog, for a walk along the beach, and he's got his two sons. They often come with him. The other day, about a week or so ago, he messaged me. I won't tell you the message, I'll just break the story down. He's walking along near the other uh, water, it's the evening, and they've got the dog, and he's got his son with him. And they see a group of people, you know, 20 feet away from him or so, and they're all stood together, and they're by the water as the tide's coming in in the evening. So I'm setting this romantic setting for you. Suddenly, he sees a bit of commotion from these people and he thinks well I don't really know what that was then then him and his son and their dog all sort of get smashed in the face with something and they're like what the hell, what the hell is going on what's and his son's going dad I'm not being funny what is, what, what is that oh my god I can't see my eyes are stinging Rob's like oh what is <coughs> what's going on and Rob's thinking oh have they thrown some bird seed what is this no, what they've done is they've thrown the ashes of their relative. Oh no! And the whole cloud of it is blown directly into Rob and his son and his dog's face, mouth, oh, eyes. Oh no! But yeah. but so right, you got two things going on here. Rob's going to either find out and go, "I'm going to tell him what this is," or he's going to find out and say, "I'm not going to tell him what this." His is. son, his son knew. His son's fourteen. He he knew what it was they worked out within seconds of what it was oh, and apparently no. apparently as they were working out the family looked really angrily at rob but it's not his it's, fault like you've ruined this beautiful moment that we were trying to have and yeah i said to rob but actually what they've done is illegal because it's not it's not actually allowed you're not allowed to do that you have to have the right permissions and you have to do it in a place where it's not going to go in someone's face for health and safety you can't just chuck so you imagine right okay let's let's jump to the family because you know rob so you know yeah, how he must the, have reacted jump, to let's this. jump to the family there Santa the beach okay oh, barry you were it's always barry with you isn't it? barry you were a great guy 
you did some amazing things. That time you jumped out of that aeroplane and saved all those ducks, which are somehow were in the air, was amazing. And you shout with Steven Seagal as you did it. It was incredible as you flew through the air. You were amazing. Here we will push your ashes out to sea. Shake, 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 shake. Uh, what's that? Uh, what is that? <laughs> it's just here with the family, and they're just hearing, hearing Rob. What is that, Dad? What is that? Eyeball nerf. <laughs> it's in my throat. Yeah, Barry's in their throat. Awful, poor Rob. Poor Barry. But also, I immediately said to him, "That's great. Can I tell that one on the podcast?" And he said, "Yeah, of course." Well, you let him know that the world now knows. And then the other story that Rob sent me is one that is apparently doing the rounds at the moment. But um, I'm not sure if you've heard this story, Rob. So, um, Rob, I'm calling you Rob now. I'm not sure if you've heard this story, Gav. Uh, this is the fourth and final story from World of the Strange. This is a story that takes place in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. So very recently, there was a, a joint hen and stag do. I had one of those called a hag do. Uh, you can also call them a sten do. And they, uh, you know, a bunch of guys and girls of the bride I and groom's never party. Such a thing. Yeah, yeah. So they all went, basically, they all wanted a joint holiday to Amsterdam. And the, the stag do, the hen do, whatever you want to call it, had to be called off because something went terribly, terribly wrong with a sex act. Oh, no. Right. So what happened was you got you got. So uh, is this people that you know? No, 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 no. This is a story that Rob sent me that is doing the rounds. Um, but I will tell the story. So we're in Amsterdam, as we know. Anything goes. Anything goes. Oh yeah. So everyone had been on an all day bender, drinking, doing coke, smoking weed, having a great old time. And this is both the the hen and the stag pies. And they're, you know, bumping into each other in different bars. They're, not, they're going off and doing their own thing. They're, you know, red light district. It's all happening. The bride-to-be decides, I'm going to go into one of these booths. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a little glory hole there. Mm-mm. So she's... I don't know how she what you do, but she basically signals when she's smashed out of her face go ahead put your dick through the glory hole so she so the dick comes through the glory hole now bear in mind she's getting married in a week or so so it's a bit naughty that she's doing this but what you know whatever she wants to do is she's it's her hen do so she gives it a little suck she has a little go on it whatever you do with a willy and um then apparently there's a button you can press and if you press this button, it makes the glass unfrost, and you can see who's on the other side. And the person on the other side can do that if they want as well. It's like a little drunken thing. Oh, no. So she presses the button. Who was it? Her dad. Her own dad. Her own dad. <laughs> it's just... Like... There's a lot going on there. So immediately after she they saw each other she screamed he obviously pulled his dick out of the hole everyone came running in everybody went back to their hotel rooms how she um, what was the dad so the dad was like i'm gonna come to amsterdam with my people. he well he, he's on the stag do with his son to be son-in-law to be you know so Oh right! I would have been like, no, don't forget, this I is would a been like, no, Dad's not coming to Amsterdam, wouldn't you? Yeah, but this is, you know, Alice's dad would have come on my stag do. To Amsterdam? No, maybe not to Amsterdam, but it depends what the families are like. I don't know. I'd been like, no, Dad's not coming. <laughs> Fuck that! It's oh, dad, um, dad, um, well, not dad youth, did... but it's just not like Dad's coming with us. Well, dad like... did come. That was the trouble, Gav. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> What do you so, do? Yeah. What happens so, then after that, though? Well, apparently after that, um, the wedding... I don't. I think the wedding's been postponed. <laughs> Fuck yeah, because like, basically <coughs> the other side of it was the uh, fucking groom-to-be, wasn't it? And he was just like, where's my wife-to-be? Oh, she's sucking, di- sucking your dad's dick. What? Her, no, sucking her dad's dick. Oh, her she's sucking dick. her own dad's dick. Like, what the fuck? 
and, and that would have top... got to him. I'm sure it's been probably postponed permanently. Well, well, he's married as well, so her mum found out that he'd been putting his dick in glory holes in Amsterdam. And her daughter had been going in them, sucking on them. Yeah, and then, like you said, the groom-to-be has also found out that his wife's going in there and sucking random dicks for a joke. And on top of all that throwing the incest thing, you're probably going to want to wash your hands of that and move on with your life, aren't you? Yeah, you're not going to stay with that anymore, are you? Unless that's your bag. And that's a weird bag. That is a weird bag. Like I said, anything goes on Amsterdam, but perhaps not that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things go on in Amsterdam, but definitely not that. That is a horror. Well, that's put a bad taste in my mouth. Oh. Well, talking to glory holes, Bill, how are you going to get that <laughs> off? How are you going to get that pumpkin off of there? Now? I think you should have gone for the slightly bigger hole. You had so many dr- drill bit attachments of different sizes, diameters. I think during the next little break I'm going to have to go and get some Vaseline for him because he's not getting that thing off anytime soon I'll hold him by the shoulders <laughs> you oh, God. Jesus Christ look Bill take us out of here for God's sake and then we'll have a little trailer for Hubie Halloween while we try and remove this bumpkin from Bill Murray Funkkin let's go that's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange next week though give me Ira hairless pets Weird. Well, hello, my ghouls and goblins. I know you've got your costumes picked out for the frightful festivities. <laughs> and I hope you all get more treats than tricks. I don't want you to find Is he a good guy? Hubie Dubois is the nicest guy in this town. Here is some happy Halloween word searches. You can pass it out to the kids. Thank you so much. As a trained volunteer, I know what it's like when the spooky fun gets out of hand. No, no, no. The supermarket's selling expired bacon. Janet at the library has not been herself lately. I heard a voice in the sewer. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize him. It's pretty impressive how long he's been a loser. <laughs> Mess with Shuby Dubois. Murder! Ah! A Salem tradition. <laughs> you gotta expect a scare here or there. There's something off in this town. Victor Lambert? Victor Lambert? Is that you? Salem PD? Yeah, you're over here. This is Hubie Dubois. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look up. Salem needs me. When you're alone. What are you going to do, Mr. Dubois? We're going to do every October 31st. Make sure every citizen is protected. No one in Salem is safe tonight. So would you lose your thermos? Oh, that'll never happen. Anyway. Oh, mystery here. Oh. Jubilee! I know who did this. Not now, Yubi. Mayor, I suggest we cancel Halloween immediately. We ain't canceling a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is some Dateline NBC shit. People are strange. People are strange. People are strange. <laughs> you're the best person I know. That's why you're a hero. Hubie Halloween from 2020. Hubie Halloween. Despite his devotion to his hometown of Salem and its Halloween celebration, Hubie Dubois is a figure of mockery for kids and adults alike. But this year, something is going bump in the night, and it's up to Hubie to save Halloween. 
I want to say, uh, change my surname to Dubois. I love Gavin, it. Gavin Dubois. Gav Dubois. Um, Gav Dubois. Dan Dubois. Dan Dubois. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? I like that. Don't take that from me. That's my <laughs> So, Adam Sandler movie. Now, let, we, we have to really, you know, briefly discuss Adam Sandler. I never thought we'd my cover boy. him. Yep. You either love him or hate him. Most tend to hate him. Weirdly, I think which is like fine. nowadays, I think back in the day when he had, didn't do so much, I think not so much possibly. I don't know. Uh, I've always enjoyed Adam Sandler since Happy Gilmore. Yeah, Adam, you know, Happy Gilmore, Wedding Singer. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of his stuff that he's done, but he did make a lot of shit. Uh, there was about 10 years where his career was awful. Now, he's quite a good serious actor when he wants to be. Um Particularly like Punch Drunk Love. Did he do some Diamond Heist movie or something on Netflix? Now, that, that leads me on to Uncut Gems. Yeah, which not, is I've not seen it. I don't know enough really, about. really <laughs> good, really tense film. Um, very, very good straight acting from him in that. However, he said, if I don't win a, an Oscar for this, then I'm going to go straight back to Netflix and make the shittest film I can using the sort of characters that you lot are always slagging me off for using. And lo and behold, he made Hubie Halloween, where he plays a man-child with a silly voice. So he made this to spite, you know... Did he? The Oscars, or whatever, the, the Academy. But it's a bit It's a bit fucking... It's a bit shit to be like, if I don't win an Oscar, that's a bit fucking up your own ass, isn't it? I know what you mean, but Uncut Gems is an incredible film. Um, but it, there was more to it than that because they were basically saying like he shouldn't be doing this. He should stick to the kind of shit that he does that no one watches. So and he said, "Why not?" Rather than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he went back. He made this, and you know what? I, I like it. I fell in love with this movie when it dropped three years ago on Netflix. It looks so nice. So it's, it's such a love letter to Halloween. Great production, and we'll get into all of that. Lo- incredible amount of. Um, you know homages all the way through it to, to many films not just horror but many films um, there's werewolf in it as well there's lots of random stuff in it and yes Adam Sandler does play a man child with a silly voice but he's someone that I can get behind because he's there to protect Halloween which I really admire and I, I love I, yeah I love the fact he's just like this marshal to uh, to this little town um, I I I always love the little town dynamic. I love things like that, and you get used to all the characters. That's why I quite like the sort of Stephen King stories, the Salem's Lot, that sort of thing. Like more recently, with like a Midnight Mass stuff like that. I do like the sort of you get to know everybody, regardless of what genre it being dark, straight, or this being goofy and comedy. Um, but this has that whole thing as well. It is a bit weird though that he has this love with this woman called Viola that he's loved for all his always live for him and she's really liked him yet somehow it's because it's it's a movie and we're having an info dump on it but they they they're like saying to each other what's going on it's like you must see each other every day and have done for years on end why all of a sudden now where you just explaining to each other what's going on well i've got two children from a marriage it's obviously for us as the audience i know i don't think he has seen her for a while well where's he been well, she's been married to the cop but, for yeah, years. But they living in that town, though. They both have. I, I know, but I, I just don't think don't they really understand. talk to each other. I, I don't, don't, but just don't, I don't understand. But I, I don't he would really... not know anything at all about her. Yeah, it's just like, I don't think that matters, though, either, does it? It because... doesn't matter. That It's just whatever. It's, just, yeah. it's an info dump for us. And there's a lot of fun uh, faces in this. Lots of people that you'd Lots see and know. Loads of people. Adam Sandler. I love Shaq O'Neill. Uh, uh, Shaquille O'Neal as uh, DJ Aurora who basically has the voice like she's the DJ from the Warriors or the Fog okay Warriors this is I I think I think that's more of a Fog thing oh no that's taking it from the Warriors oh okay it was actually supposed to be it's supposed to be a Fog homage apparently oh you oh I suppose I don't know a horror movie but I just looked at that as a uh, yeah you're right the Warriors absolutely Yeah, and there's obviously some Psycho and Friday the 13th references in this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's also uh, some werewolf but, stuff going but, on in but it. But I love the fact that his voice is a uh, female. I think that's fucking brilliant. And then his, then his, his uh, girlfriend or wife comes in and her voice is uh, a man. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. You, you... 
I like it. Man. I, I know Sarah. She'd look at that and just be like, "This is fucking shit, Gav." <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like it. So just to throw in some of the people that are in this as well, you've got um, Ray Liotta. Amazing that he's in this briefly. Uh, Rob Schneider, of course, we're big fans of him as he was in Jaws. Um, Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. We got Tim Meadows. Uh, Keenan of Keenan and, uh, and Kale. Um, we got Michael Chiklis. Um, That's about it, though, really. Well, there's a few other little people popping up, but yeah, Shaq. Um, but the sort of people that are always popping up for Adam Sandler movies, you know what you're getting with this, really. And like you said, I think what sells this to me and you and other people that were shocked that they liked this. It looks so good. Yeah, it's basically, it takes place in a town exactly like Haddonfield. It's not Blumhouse, is it? Because it's Netflix. No, it's Netflix, yeah. It, it is so nice looking. Honestly, just look at the production and just the, the, the colour palette they've gone for. The oranges, the greens, the sort of the darkness to it. It's just so gorgeous looking. It's something well, which... It's know. Adam Sandler's own production company, Happy Madison, um, which is, you know, two of his movies, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. But his production company is Happy Madison. And um, it, so it, he, it would have been him and his group producers that came up with this. And, and Adam Sandler is a huge a horror movie, scary movie fan. And, you know, especially he loves Halloween, not just the movie, but like he loves Halloween the season. So this is like a love letter from him and his gang of people to finally do something it's, that's scary-ish. I think they do uh, a really good job because it's kind of... The way you start saying it, it's a Bloomhouse. Obviously, straight away, I was like, oh, God, no, of course it's not. It's Netflix with them. But it just... It kind of looks Blumhousey a bit, but actually looks kind of better. Do you know what I mean? It has a little bit more of a slicker look, a bit more of a different look, a bit more. It's got a bit more the, pro. It's got the same sort of production feel as that first Goosebumps movie. Yeah, with Jack Black. Do you know what I mean? It feels slick, and some money has been spent on it. See, I like e I like the gags now. I like the editing, like because you can you can make jokes with just editing. It's it's easy totally. to make a gag. You can cut someone off halfway through them saying something, and that would make you laugh, even if it's a serious thing. That'd even make you laugh more. Um, but this has this is a really good job of editing and gags, mix of gags, actually pretty funny. Some really good shit. Like I love the fact his mum has all these things like the boner donor t shirt and all these different t shirts. It's so fun. I firstly find that really funny. Like Muff Diver, she's wearing a t-shirt that she got from the thrift store that says Muff Diver or Boner Donor. Boner Donor, yeah. It's so funny. And she she thinks it's when you do something wrong. So then he's he's at the school thing saying, oh, sorry, my boner. I did have a boner myself once at school. I used to be able to get a I used to have different boners at schools. Yeah, We've all had old. boners. One time I made a huge boner at school. Yeah, when I used to get boners. So funny. And we've obviously got the recurring... Um, joke with his thermos, his, his flask. thermos flask. I love it though. Which is like a Swiss Army flask. It's always got soup in it, but it's also got a megaphone. Uh, it's it's it, got it, a grappling it, hook. And he's basically this character that everybody in the town uh, just takes the fucking piss out of, and they just rip the shit out of him. They call him Puby. <laughs> they just they're just so horrible to him. And they manage. They always twist his name up. At one point, somebody says, "Huby, do be careful." And Hubie Dooby Doo, they just really rip into this guy. I really like it, but let's get into the movie. Um, we start off with Ben Stiller as a, uh, a kind of character you've seen before, a real nasty, horrible Well, no, doctor. He's, he, he's really playing his character from... Ah, what was that from? From um, Happy Gilmore. Remember? Uh, so his grandma's... He's looking after his mum. Uh, yeah. Not the mental eye, but the old people's home. And he says... Yeah. He's got all the old people sewing for him, like a sweatshop. And one of them yeah. says... My fingers hurt. And he goes, yeah? Well, how about your arm's going to hurt because I'm going to break it off if you don't you know, keep sewing, Granny. And he's the same crazy guy. A, same yeah. mustache. And he starts up and he basically goes into a cell and prods it around in like this place. He's like maybe it's an a, 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 um, a institute for criminally insane or something like that. Yeah. And uh, he, he goes to pull off the sheets and it's nothing there. What is it? Like some jelly. Jelly. And a hot dog as a body. Yeah, and it's basically... I our, quite like the our, fact it's jelly and a hot dog. A hot dog our, just sticking out of jelly. Our version of Michael Myers, which is Richie Hartman, played yeah, by Rob Schneider. It's gone, and he's like, oh no, it's gone. And that's, that's Ben Stiller out of the film. 
he's escaped and that's it's a, basically there's a psycho on the loose so that, we've got a bit of a halloween thing going on here michael myers is on the loose they've taken halloween and uh yeah that's what they're doing and we kick in with monster mash playing and we have got a great soundtrack Town montage this. yep and i love a good time montage with a radio dj and like I said, the soundtrack is great all the way through this monster mash. You've got loads of stuff, Ghostbusters, loads of stuff plays all the way through this movie. It's fantastic. Um, and we get to meet Hubie on his bike, cycling along the town of Salem, and literally not one single person apart from his mum and and Violet Valentine. They're the only two people in the whole town that seem to like him. Everybody else is throwing eggs at him, throwing rubbish at him. And he's become so used to this that he's a master at ducking when things come flying his way. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like, things are coming at him. He's putting out his flask, putting it into the flask, putting it back in, just literally ducking back and forth, so cycling along. It's He's got to the point where he, as a person, must at some point cried himself to sleep in bed going nobody likes me and then gone actually i don't care i'm better than that the next day yeah. and just getting on with it well his mum and violet valentine always say you're the nicest person i know you only ever think of others and i think really that that's there is a there, there's a little message to this there is a message to this and it's you know it's been well, nice. people might not believe we're saying that during an adam's this, this is the other is. movie we thought we'd rather be a nicer person in the other film yeah yeah totally um so he sees violet who she's like hi you be and he crashes obviously uh and this is where he meets his his new neighbor He's just moving in. Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Who may or may not be a werewolf. Which is brilliant. It is. By the way, uh, Hubie, if you uh, if you ever hear any weird noises coming from my house during a full moon, don't come around knocking on the door. Don't, especially during a full moon, just stay away. And he's like, why are you boarding up the windows in your house? He's like, oh, I'm just paranoid about burglaries. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just like these silly things that are happening. It's so good. I, I love it. Uh, and we find out that he works in a deli, doesn't he? Hubie? Yeah, he does. And he's over at the uh, the actual bit where they're sort of serving food and meat and stuff like that. And he chats to one of the meat guys. And Ray Liotta happens to be there as a customer. And it, Ray Liotta plays, um, <clears throat> we find out later on, spoiler, Ray Liotta plays a stupid person. Yeah. He has a very low IQ, but masks it, which we find out later on, masks it with uh, being, a, being a twat. Bullying, Gav. Mm bullying and yeah that the basically the big prank in this supermarket with Adelian is that they love scaring him he scares very easily considering he loves halloween so they're he always does. trying he to prank at him. everything and they find Literally. it amusing so so ray liotta looks over to uh the guy behind the counter the guy looks at him and they just nod at each other because they've got this prank going and so then he goes uh hubie ray liotta does have you got any uh sheep's head uh <laughs> like that he goes um, um uh what what and turns around looks down and there's like a, a a rubber sheep's head with the the deli guy behind up through the salad stuff going ah and it makes Huey jump and we also see the O'Doyle kids and the O'Doyles are from uh, Billy Madison um, O'Doyle rules uh, so there you know there's lots of other Adam Sandler movies that bleed into this one as well and in fact some of the O'Doyle kids wear screen masks and like to chase Adam Sandler around on their bikes yeah, and throw quite, things at him cool. oh, I like the fact they're in screen masks uh, Sergeant Donnie we were introduced to which is um, a very bad fake beard and wig going on on the which, police, policeman which our friend RJ McCready once sent a picture of to me and said oh I didn't realise you were in this movie Dan <laughs> I was like, thanks for that very much. And that's uh, the cop who uh, we find out was married to the lady, the love interest of Adam Sandler in this, yeah. Hubie. Violet, Violet Valentine. Violet. So, uh, but they're not together now. But he is also aware of Hubie because Hubie seems to bother the police department regularly with uh, nonsense. Uh, the boy who cried wolf type sort of thing. Always saying to them, have you noticed there's something going on? And they're, just, they're, they're sick of it. Yeah. They can't be bothered. So they, so the plot. So where we're at right now is, the police have heard that uh, oh, Richie Hartman, Richie Hartman's on the loose, 
and we're just starting to find out how much he could be going back to his hometown he could be going back to his hometown and we're just starting to find out that Hubie Dubois is really into health and safety particularly on Halloween yeah so we can see where this is all going throw in that a new neighbour has moved in like I said who may or may not be a werewolf he loves Hubie's Halloween decorations what a great house Hubie Dubois has but we find out he lives with his mum yeah it's good decorations yeah and it, like we said, his mum is always wearing a very inappropriate T-shirt, much like Styles from Team Wolf, but she, she doesn't, doesn't realise. No, no. So she's got a Boner Donor T-shirt. It says Boner Donor, and she goes, "Well, I think boners are when you make a mistake. That's right." And he's yeah. like, "Hmm, okay, mum." Yeah, and, and agrees with her because it's his mum. Oh, okay, mum, you know best. Yeah, he is a real man child, <laughs> and she basically says to him. Their father's dead, husband. She basically explains to him the plot of the movie, which we don't realise until the end of the movie, which is, son, Salem is full of bullies, and today is going to be the day you have to stand up for yourself once and for all. Dun, dun, dun. We'll come back to that line at the yeah, end. Yeah. And he's like, well, thank you very much, Mum. I'll try my best, but uh, as long as everybody has a good Halloween, that's the main thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> And he does his little, you know, Adam Sandler voice. And, yeah, we get then his... We find out here about his flask, which is a ridiculous joke, but it's brilliant. It's got mace in it. It's got a vacuum, a grappling hook. His flask, his thermos, can do anything. At one point, he pours loads of drinks in it, and it turns into a blender, and he just makes a brand-new drink out of it. It's just... Somebody says to him at one point, aren't you worried about losing that thing? Well, then he goes, that, that, that actually will never happen. And he throws it away. Throws it in his arm. It just springs back. <laughs> it just goes back <laughs> to his arm. It's so good. I love it. Why does it, why does it make me laugh so? Uh, why I, do I like it so much? I don't know. I don't know. It's funny, though. I, it's... Again, though, this movie, I felt very safe with this film. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I thought nothing really could bad happen, but I'm in the world of horror in a kind but, of way. But, but Gav, it's, it's got you and I hooked in because then then we get introduced to the jewels aspect. So there's a parade happening on Halloween and the mayor has been told we shouldn't go ahead with this parade because Richie Hartman's on the loose and he could come back. And the mayor says, no, this, this parade is so important to this community. We can't close it down. We can't have a, a curfew. I don't care about this Richie Hartman thing. Make it go away. I don't want to hear about it. Just like the shark with the Mayor and Jules. And, of course, he's even wearing the same jacket as the Mayor and Jules. Ooh. Oh, OK. I didn't yeah, know. so there's that whole Jules thing going on there. So we've already got Halloween, some screen references, Jules, all that stuff thrown in. And there's going to be a few other bits and bobs coming up they're, as well. So. They're a Salem exhibit of, like, uh, the witches and stuff, uh, which is quite nice, actually. Um, and uh, Huey's uh, such a nice guy. He's printed out word searches for the kids waiting in line outside. Yes. And that's such a sweet thing to do. And, and I guess... would actually think women would probably want to be with him because he's such a nice person. And she looks at him, Violet's there, and she kind of looks at him like, like oh. Well, he gives a pile of them to the, the nun and says, oh, can you hand these out to the children? And she says, yeah, walks off and just slams them into the trash can. She doesn't oh. even... <laughs> um, we do find out that something <clears throat> has killed a pig owned by these two farmers and it's um, been eaten yeah it's been you know, partially eaten i love this 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 husband and wife dynamic yeah she, well, they it. hate each other don't they she, she, he's just like just saying i love that pig he's like, a bit more than me you know, i think i did love that pig more than you and it's that sort of back and forwards <laughs> And it's she's, so funny. And he's like, what are we going to do? Peanuts lying dead on the floor. And she's like, we're going to fucking eat Peanut later on. That's later what we're going to do. Later on, we're fucking eating him. Like, yeah, then later on in the police station, they're just there arguing. And it's the only time we see him, and I love them. They're always arguing. And the joke there really is that they talk like a couple of real um, redneck Southerners, but they're actually a black husband and wife. But they've got this like real rednecky Southern way of talking, which is hilarious. It just completely contrasts with how they look. Side note: Another thing with these Halloween movies, yeah. Uh, have, did you see all of them? The New York Free movies. I have not seen Halloween Ends. Okay, I think it's Ends, where there's a gay couple in a house and it, two blokes, and 
Uh, someone the other day put a picture of that on Facebook. I'm going back to the dynamics. No, of it's thing. Halloween Kills because I've seen that one. Oh, okay, cool. And they're the best things in the movie, those two. Yeah, I remember and those I two. I would have liked to have just seen a movie with them two. And someone put a picture of them up on just like a Facebook horror group and everyone just saying like, oh, yeah, they're the best thing. Everyone's <laughs> just saying that's the best thing of that movie. And I was like, yeah. And it's the dynamics of things. And I'd like to see that, like I, we were just talking about with dynamics. Uh Hubie talks to Violet at this uh, this sort of event that's leading up to the parade and finds out that she's been fostering children. Um, so she's got a couple of ex- girls living with her who are sisters, but they're her foster daughters. And she has a son as well, who's the guy from Stranger Things. Um, Which I didn't um, realise, and I watched this with Jay, and Jay's the one who said to me who that was, and said, yeah, he's come out as gay in real life. I was like, who is he? Uh, out of Stranger I was like, that's that dude. Oh, shit. It was obviously, I was like, Will, he's like the little one that got kidnapped, well, taken to the uh, yeah, well, upside down. The upside down. The upside down. Oh, what, that was a good show. I did like that Stranger Things. That was all right. Yeah, well, there's right. one more one more season to go, um, which has been, keep, keeps getting delayed, but then that's what? it then. Is there another season? They were they're halfway through, sort of writing it and doing everything, but then that's it, then it's done and dusted. Well, that's going to be CGI heavy, isn't it? Can't the kids all grown up this <clears> year? Well, or... yeah, I think I think it'll just be t- set a few years later. Okay. I think that's it, then. Um, I thought that was done for. Hubie, uh, what happens next? Uh, oh, yeah, this is where Violet says... I think I'm in love with that man. He's so lovely and so nice. And we've known each other since kindergarten and he's just really, really nice. Um, uh, they, there's, there's the two of the neighbour and the gravestone name. Yes. So somebody says to Hubie, there's something weird it's going what on. what Violet says. Oh, yeah. She says... I don't know some- why she knows. But, yeah. There's something weird about that neighbour because the name you've just told me that he uses... Uh, so uh, something at the graveyard uh, you should check out. And what is it? You should just check it out, which is a bit like, what does that mean? That could be anything. Well, well look, if you tell Hubie to investigate something... He Hubie, is a little little private dick, isn't he? he? And he goes along during Ray Liotta's dad's funeral. It's not the best time to go. Ray Liotta's just like, right, that's it, I'm fucking having you. Well, he's, he's scrabbling around on the ground and he discovers that... Um, Ray Liotta Walt- sees him, though. And he discovers that Walter Lambert, which is the name that Steve Buscemi said he, he goes by, no has date. no death date. It says, born here, but died... 16, whatever, and doesn't die. So he then starts digging up the wood, the um, ground, flicking all the soil, and it keeps going on to the priest, played by Michael Chiklis, who's like, I'm going to kick your fucking ass, man. I was a boxer, you know. I may be a priest, but I'm a boxer. And then his little choir boy with him he's like you want me to go kick his ass father and he's like mm, yeah maybe in a minute and they're like both really into like just beating but, up Hubie Dubois yeah yeah so, <laughs> totally well they all are Ray Liotta's just like right I'm fucking having him well Ray Liotta initially says that I really want to say sorry for the way I spoke to you in the deli the other day basically my dad died, just, just died this week and uh, you know that's why I've been acting you know, not very nice to people and the grief has hit me and I'm very sorry about that. And also my dad loved good jokes. So poof, and he just shoves Hubie into the, his dad's grave, basically. Yeah. Which is very I nice bet his dad tell. was a right bastard. If Ray Little was like that. Yeah. And, and his mum's saying, what have you done? What are you doing? He's saying, mum, it's fine. It makes it better. He liked it, mum. Yeah, it's what dad would have wanted. Come so, on. So then the great, Hubie pulls out his soup flask and thinks, oh, just sip, sip and have some soup in the gravestone <laughs> on the coven. And then just gets dirt thrown all up and he goes, hey, like that. And the guy looks down and has a heart attack and falls on top of him. Then we cut to Hubie standing there and goes up to uh, Ray Liotta's mum and says, Oh, not nice witch costume. And he says, the <laughs> witch costume? It's it, her husband's funeral. And he said, oh, sorry, my boner. Yeah, my boner. My boner. Apologize. I'm sorry, my, my boner. boner. And then as he walks past Deep Buscemi, who, he's like, oh, you're boarding up your windows there. And he's yeah. like, ah, it's all about security for me. Whoa, so like every time you see him, he's getting hairier and weirder and weirder. And it's funny. Um, and then we cut to school where Hubie is giving a Halloween health safety and safety talk. presentation. It's so good. And he comes out dressed as a ghost. Ooh, and the head's like, oh, God. 
And he's like, it's okay. I am not, in fact, a ghost. I am just a human being. It is okay. <laughs> and then he looks over at that one kid. He's got, like, a zombie costume on. And he goes, ah! Kill it! Kill it! Burn it! Burn it! And then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, son. That is a very good costume. I don't apologize. Because <laughs> he wants to, like, kill this kid. Yeah. <laughs> and he holds up the word ghost. We never get to find out exactly where this is going, but he says, this word can be broken down. G is for give. Give to others. And he starts talking about how when he was a kid, he would give most of his candy from Halloween collecting to the poor. But before he can get to the H, the O, the S, and the T, the kids are just throwing food at him. He's got an umbrella in his thermos, which opens up. And, yeah, he just doesn't get a chance, really, to finish off the uh, the presentation, sadly, which is... A shame, because I'd love to have known what the rest of the, the letters stood for. Yeah. Help, I should imagine. O was probably... I don't, I don't know. know. Let's not go down that. Um, but Violet's son is invited to a Halloween party by a girl in the coffee shop. This hot girl who dresses as Red Riding Hood. And she's, a, she's like two years older than him. She knows he's younger. But she's like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go to the party with you. So he's pretty happy about that and so at this halloween party later there's probably going to be a few things going on i should imagine i like it in the morning you got like the dj talking over the top of a, a, a like a halloween morning montage of people getting ready stuff being done and you get the request of ghostbusters to come on yeah so that's playing with this montage and it's very reminiscent of uh, a scene in ghostbusters when casey Kasem's on the radio dj's talking over the top of you know we've got new boys in town and da, 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 yeah. da. so the ghostbuster it's very it felt like that after capturing the spirit the boys stayed on to dance the night away with lovely ladies that, you know it's that yeah, kind of thing yeah, that. It and it's the same like here that, because that, it's the ghostbusters song playing and the, and the dj saying uh, today's the day here in salem don't forget it's halloween and we got the parade coming up this afternoon but yeah, after I, that I, I loved this and i'm sitting there going i love this film yeah. Like I just, I just want to be there that morning with the radio DJ Ghostbusters staying that over this little town. It's all getting ready for the. All they care about is Halloween. Nothing else in the whole world matters. And Hubie comes out of his house in the morning, and he's got a little sash over him that says "Monitor," because he is the Halloween monitor for the day. Oh, he's a Halloween monitor, and he saves a cat. And the lady's like, "What are you doing with my cat?" He throws it at her, and she catches it. Um. <laughs> And then Violet says, don't make me get out of this car and kick your ass. You know I could do it. Leave Hubie alone. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. she loves him. Yeah. Everyone's getting their costumes ready. Um, you know, some really good costumes. I put here great Halloween vibes because it just it just it's, gives you, like you said, it's it just... It really is lovely Halloween vibes. I, they have so much love for Halloween in it. And that's why I really like this film. Yeah. I, you know, I also get a bit of a trick-or-treat vibe from this as yeah, well. Yeah, it's a, it's a child-friendly sort of trick-or-treat. Yeah. Um, nighttime comes. It's a full moon. So uh, I, I, do, uh, I do like the bit where the lady says, I'm asexual, but that lady's making me hella horny. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is pretty gross. Yeah, that is gross, that is. Um, you sound more like Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, night time comes, there's a full moon, so we know what that might mean for uh, Steve Buscemi. Oh. And Hubie is on patrol. He's on patrol. This is a bit where he saves the cat. And uh, Lester confronts him. There's a bit more bullying going on here. Yeah. Um, and uh, we haven't met Lester yet, played by Tim Meadows. And he's got a really bad wig, hasn't he? Really bad hairline. And he's basically always been jealous of Hubie, who's got nice hair, apparently. But he's really mean to him. Um, and this is where they, they go to the drive through a bit later on. And they try and trick Hubie, don't they, into... Because uh, Lester tells his girlfriend to go over to Hubie and say that there's a strange, spooky car over there, which basically, this is like a little nod to Christy. It's like driving, isn't it? Yeah. And the car starts up and starts flying at him. And there's no one in sight, but there's a headless man driving it, which makes Hubie run away. And then all the scream kids are in the back of the car and they're all throwing stuff at Hubie. It's all very mean and just more bullying, really. Um, 
Also, Lester says, I would like to complain about your neighbour. All I can hear is really strange howling noises coming from his house in the middle of the night. I don't know what all that's about. And he does sneak into his house, doesn't he? Yeah, he did jump ahead with that uh, drive-ins a lot, 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 lot later on. Yeah, sorry, I was getting excited. I was but... thinking, oh, where the hell? Yeah, uh, he, he's, he's, all these noises are going on at the house. And Hubie breaks into Steve Buscemi's house. Yeah, well, his multi-flask is also a drill, so he manages to open the door lock, which is fine. Gets in there, and he finds loads of dog food. He finds a, finds a fucking massive hole in the floor. Loads of dog turds on a on uh, newspaper. Uh, uh, is, this, is this you? Is this yours? You Have you been doing this? <laughs> and then he sees... Steve Buscemi in the corner yeah. going <laughs> he says, I know off. you said um, come down if you hear bad noise but I heard noises and I've come down Steve Buscemi's like well yeah like, I did say know, not to fucking come down here yeah. Um, yeah he well he manages to escape anyway and um, all very strange stuff going on there and we cut back to the police station where the pig owners are back still arguing with the, each other and with the police and Hubie interrupts, and he comes in and he says... He's very excited about what happens, though, isn't he? Well, because they trick him here. And we've seen this before in movies where they basically, to shut somebody up, they give them, like, a pretend title. And they say to him, look, you're going to become a special deputy or something like that. But you can't tell any, anybody about this, Hubie. All I want you to do is spy on people keep an eye on the town, write it all down in a journal, and then deposit your journal into the bin located outside of the park, and we will pick that journal up tomorrow morning, and we'll know everything that's gone on in the town. But you can't tell anybody that we've asked you to do this. You can't pretend, you can't tell anybody that we've asked anything about it. We'll deny all, you know, involvement. Yep. Basically give them a fake mission, and he stands up with a little, pretty no, much got a little says, boner. Um, I've, I've got something we could do. Have you ever heard about the undercoat? And he takes this, like, he's got a little gas for his flask. Oh, like he's, he's gas asthma window. inhaler. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and each time he's excited, he releases a like, sound. So he keeps every saying, he says, yeah. we can't. Oh, well, you know, it's a, no one will know that you're actually doing it. Uh, you can't. So that's to say a positive yes. You can't tell anyone about it. We can't pay you. And he just keeps saying it, and it goes down and down and down of how good this is. And he's just hold on going, Shh, this is great, Shh, this is great. That's very funny. It is very funny. We get another little Halloween nod here where we've got Cookie and Danielle, who are the two foster um, girls with Violet, and they're on their own watching Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, good choice. Uh, and the other chilling out, you know, getting ready for Halloween. Uh, their brother has chipped off the guy from Stranger Things has gone to the Halloween party he has naughty, naughty boy. boy he's supposed to be looking after them uh, there was a cute moment earlier where um, Hubie meets them and he says what's your name and she says cookie and he goes well then you are a smart cookie I, I did, it's just a really cute little quite, moment quite off the cuff isn't it yeah I love it um, cut to the party and the punch is being spiked we've got some amazing costumes people dressed up as all types of things um there's a band playing as well and of course hubie shows up gav and he starts talking about wish he could get his boner and stuff again or well, whatever before that he says i smoking this for losers and he takes a cigarette out of someone's mouth then he starts pouring beer away and in the end the whole party's like we're gonna kick your ass you're ruining this party for us so that's where he says all right i think it's time to me to me to tell you we all make boners from time to time I made some huge boners when I was at high school, and I'm sorry. This this is my boner. <laughs> I'm so sorry that this has happened. Yeah. And they're like, I don't think he knows what the word boner means. And they're like, No, I don't think he's even ever had a boner. No. Yeah. So poor old Huey, just a buffoon. Yeah. And it sounds awful when we say all this out loud. Anyone who hates Adam Sandler is listening to me say all that and saying. And that is why I don't watch Adam Sandler movies, because I don't want to hear him stood there going, that is a boner. But if you like Adam Sandler, then you'll love this shit. If you like Halloween, then you'll love this shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I like it. Well, Freddie Mercury, which is one of the kids dressed as Freddie, decides to play a trick on him. So a couple of them say, oh, a kid's gone missing in the maze, in the cornfield. 
there's a corn maze outside. Yeah. And Hubie's like, ah, I better go rescue him then. <clears throat> yep, Hubie's like, I'm going to do this. So he goes into the corn. My, my wife hates corn, like high grass and cornfields. So I said to her, she was watching this with me, and she was like, I'd not fucking go in there, no way. She watched that. Have you seen um in the long in the tall grass? Is it that Stephen no, King? No, I've not seen it. Oh, it's very good, very good. Um, anyway, Hubie goes in. The, 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 it looks really nice, by the way. There's a uh, at one point there's this big crane shot and there's all this fog and there's obviously a lot of art of artificial fog, but whatever. It looks nice. I really like it. It's got such a lovely atmosphere with the music as well. It just looks so good. Yeah, they put definitely put some love into this. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Um, so he's gone in there and he he sees the kid dressed as Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, Freddy Mercury tied up, and then he's vanished. He's t- he's st- snatched away well, into the well, corn. Let's ju- you're jumping ahead a little bit. So yeah, he goes in there. He's looking for the kids. Then you got the other two coming in to look for Hubie to tell him it's a hoax. So we've got like different parties going into this corn maze, and it's huge. Um, but yes, he does find him tied up and all of a sudden sucked out of camera shot. Just sorry, like, gone. Um, it's like, what the fuck was that? And it? it's like, what, yeah. what the hell was this? What, what? And I really like that because all of a sudden it's, it's flipped this movie again. Like, what? Because what? we've got this werewolf, is it a werewolf? That's not what, what is that? What is going on? Is it aliens? What, you know, what could it be? Yeah. Especially because we're in a cornfield and you're thinking of crop circles and that yeah, kind of I, thing. I look forward to when Elijah can actually, because I tried to introduce Big Trouble in Little China to him the other day, we got halfway through uh-huh. it and that's about it. Um, I, I look forward to when his attention spans a bit more interested in films. Oh, oh, to showing him this film, I think he'd quite enjoy. Yeah, it's a fun one. Mm. Uh, well, cut to Violet arriving at the diner. She works out for her night shift. Um, she can't get hold of her son, so she's a little bit worried. She doesn't know where he is, and that's because he is at the party. And what I love, just before that, we get the radio DJ again saying it's 9pm now, and it's just like the radio DJ is just telling us where we are through the story. And I really like that. It's a simple way to do that. Well, she also says, or he, when we find out, says, <laughs> yeah. um, it's 9pm, so all of you ch- children are probably just getting home now with your candy. However, after 9pm is where the adult monsters come out to play. And they're going to be really naughty, and really nice, and sort of, you know, she sort of basically implies that after nine o'clock is when all the adults get smashed. Um, so there we go. Uh, yeah, Violet arrives for it. Kate yes. hold of her son, but luckily, Adam Sandler has said to her son, "Go home because your daughter, your sisters, need you, and you should really go home." And I won't tell your mother that I found you in here kissing with this girl. Totally. And then we're at the uh, driving. That's right. And I, I love the, 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 the man and woman. I love the fact that his headless uh, costume, headless head, headless body yeah. costume, so good. And he's holding his, and it's his head that is in the costume, so shoulders above his head. I realise. I love the fact he gets, <laughs> oh, the dynamic of this relationship. He gets into the car and looks at her and starts sucking on. The, the fake a fingers. man's dead fingers. And she said, he's like, is this turning you on? And she's like, no, why would it turn me on? You're sucking on uh, d- dead fingers. A man's dead fingers. Are you saying my hands are like a dead man's hands? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, I thought it was horny. It would she's would like, turn you on. It doesn't. She's like, it's not horny at all. Does, she's, uh, in the, uh, there's an outtake, actually, where she says, are they supposed to be ten little penises? Is that what they're supposed to be? <laughs> it's so funny. That's good. And then later on, it, it keeps going on that she he's trying to turn get her turned on, and she just can't get turned on by anything. It's quite funny. So they decide yeah, to pull a tr- prank. Yeah, they do. And it, it's a bit of a, a Christine throwback because there's a spooky car in the corner of the driveway drive um, drive through. Yep. Hubie goes over to it. And the headless man starts driving at him. He starts running and screaming. He starts freaking the fuck out, which is quite funny, really. And, it's and then all of a sudden, the, the ghost, ghost face BMX squad starts chasing him as well. It's really mean, isn't it? Yeah. He runs off. He uses his it's grappling a flask hook. megaphone. He's already said to try and get the cop to stop. Uh, the cop to stop. The car to stop when it's coming towards him. That's right. So my favourite accessory in it now is the it grappling is. hook. It's well good. It just pulls him up to knock him out on the tree to flip backwards and come back down. It's such a good stunt as well. 
And he lands in the forest. He lands in the woods over the fence for the drive-in. Oh, no. And it's all atmospheric with the moon in the background. Looks so good. He finds Steve Buscemi pretty much like an animal in the woods. In the, in the bushes. And he's like, uh, Walter, Mr. Lambert, is that you? Are you doing? What are you doing here? And Mr. Lambert's just like, just runs off. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. And Evie's like, he says to, I think he says to him, are you, a, are you a lycanthrope or is this something? And he thinks to himself, that guy's definitely a werewolf. Like, I know that whatever's going on here is this guy's a werewolf. Yeah. And then the parade starts. And the cop says to the mayor, something weird is going on. We need to cancel the parade. And this is where they really get the jewels moment. And he's like, we're not going to cancel this parade. Too many people rely on it. There's a lot of money in this. So let the parade go on and just deal with this Richie Hartman situation separately. And we have seen all the way through this movie, we've seen this person in a pig mask here and there, a bit like Michael Myers, just yeah, popping up here and cool. there in the back room. And it is cool. There's a lot of elements to it. And this is a definitely a multiple viewing movie, I think. You get more out of it the more you watch it, especially if you're into it. If you hate it, then you're just going to hate it even more. <laughs> well, you'd probably turn it off by now, I'm sure. I really like it, though. Um, and Cookie and Danielle see this pig head guy at one point, and they run off. So Hubie goes to the vi- to the diner to speak to Violet. And he tells her um, uh, about the missing boy in the in the corn maze. And he's like, I think there's something weird going on here. People don't seem to believe me. And she was like, well, look, if anybody can do this, Hubie, it's you. I believe in you. And I think you're the nicest person I know, and I think you would do whatever you can to help. And, and you're a hero. She basically calls him a hero. and makes him really start to believe in himself a little bit. The cop's gone to the man uh, who's apple bopping and said to me, need to cancel the fireworks. And he said, no. And then we cut to the headless horseman and his wife again, driving on down the road. There's a funny moment, and I don't know why this makes me laugh, when he, after he's well apple bobbing, uh, and then he says, no, we're not cancelling the fireworks. He says, okay. And he goes, are you sure? And he says, trick or treat. And he says, what? He says, smell my feet. And he goes, what? And he goes, smell my feet. Smell my feet. And he goes, but do, do you actually want me to, to smell your feet? And, yeah, and it's just this weird does, moment. It is a weird He just turns around and walks around. It's, it's, <laughs> it's actually a, pa- well, it's a power trip, actually, from the mayor. Uh <laughs> makes me laugh for some reason it's a really weird thing in there but yeah um so the, the dudes they're just driving down like a road and there's like a scarecrow standing oh, the in head, the middle so of the, the road the headless guy Lester yeah with the woman his girlfriend yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and they just have to stop and he goes oh i'll get out and go and have a look and now i think he says to her to get out and she's like i'm not getting out you go and get out she says you're the man you go and have a look and he's like oh, okay Se- sexist sexist e- so he equal. goes Let's both to it. get out yeah and uh, it does look really lovely with fog and lightning. It just looks so nice. It maybe rem- rem- reminded me how scary scarecrows can be. Oh yeah, scarecrows are great. When you just easy, see one, it's so there. simple and easy. Yeah, because it looks like it's standing there, and you think it's like a like a doll. It's going to move. That's the whole thing. You just stare at it, and then your mind plays tricks on you. So it's a, it's a good. I might have to make a scarecrow film now. <laughs> it's a couple of good ones out it's there. so easy it's cheap to build the, co- the costume or you know the scarecrow yeah totally and there's a couple of good scarecrow movies out there yeah Dark Knight of the Scarecrow we should also mention that we keep getting this point of view of whomever is about to be attacked we are seeing it through the eyes some triangular eyes like a pumpkin mask almost yeah so we get that again um, and Maya Rudolph Lester's girlfriend is attacked and yeah, we we end the scene there. And um, Hubie is now on the search for Cookie and Danielle, the girls. His mum's got the muff diving school T-shirt. We we uh, we get wet. I love this. It says muff diving school. We get wet. So good. Yeah, it's so good. It does it's, take it's me like... back to that shirt I think I've said on there before when I bought it like I love cracks or whatever and didn't realise it's arse cracks because I bought it in San Francisco and I thought it was crack cocaine, which is equally just not really that good. But I thought I, it was cool. I bet it was super, gay. It, like, bum, crack. I've got a Super Mario Brothers t-shirt, and it's got a picture of the Super Mario Brothers on it, and it says, cool, 
for any plumbing needs and then underneath it says we'll clean your pipes wow and i've really never noticed that it says that until like a couple of years back and i'm like shit i can't really wear this shirt around people that will notice that and read that like my in-laws you know we clean your pipes yeah uh hubie searches for the girls walter changes and handcuffs himself so a bit of a Mm. bad moon reference there maybe and this is where i don't don't think it's a bad moon reference i don't think it is but this is where rob schneider shows up roy schneider roy schneider from jules shows up and he knows these two know each other Dun dun dun! Pigman's his brother. Well, not his brother, but <laughs> dun, dun, dun. they're just uh, cellmates from the asylum. I thought they're brothers. No, no, they're cellmates from the asylum. He but we find that out says, "We need to talk," and it's yeah. like I thought that Pigman looked quite like go whoa, intimidating. Takes the mask off, you're like, oh. it's completely gone. But it's cool because uh, we find out a bit more about them in a minute. Well, Tommy from. Uh, Stranger Things and the girl that he's with they they meet Hubie and the sisters are with him so they're all reunited that's fine and he says like you need to stay inside so this reminds me of Halloween 4 now where they're like you need to stay inside we're all going to stay inside um, and Hubie says I'm, I'm going to go and save the day uh, he sees a dog outside yep and he thinks oh this must be Steve Buscemi fully transformed and he's got a <laughs> yeah and he's got a silver boat says you just stay right there and he throws a, a throw he doesn't have a gun he throws the bullet at him yeah and he, he's like a silver bullet and he eats it he's talking to the dog and the dog starts pissing and he goes no his dog starts eating it shitty and, he and then he even says shit to him like it's a and person like, stop doing that will you you know are you, are you eating your own feces in front of me is that what you're doing water come on come on and then <laughs> so he chases the dog <laughs> And they end up back around the back of the haunted house attraction. And he just walks around freaking out around the attraction, basically. Of course. He's very scared. Yeah, he hates Ray, it. Ray Liotta is outside and he oh, says... I, I love it, though, when he uh, when he maces one of the uh, people in there supposed to be there to scare him. He goes, have you just maced me? Oh, my God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they decide, well, Ray Liotta decides, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to scare the shit out of Hubie Dubois. is isn't he? Yeah, but he gets snatched. And he's got a really inside. bad clown wig on. Right yeah, now, like, eyes. what a weird costume you're wearing, really. And so. then tries chatting up like an, uh, a 21-year-old. Yeah, he tells him he's disgusting. Yeah. And then he and then he says to her, right, well, if... Well, uh, I'm going to take it out. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was actually if I'm like... Not gonna, if I'm not going to get to sleep <clears> with you, then I'm going to take it out, take up my frustrations on Hubie by going in and scaring the shit out of him. It's quite deep, in a way. And you're like, <laughs> why? <laughs> Like what the fuck? That's re- that tells a lot about you as a character. Yeah, man. Rapey McRaperson. Um, so he he gets snatched though, radio. So so that's another victim that's gone as well. And Hubie tells everybody that it's a werewolf. Uh, it's Walter the werewolf. No one believes him. I'm sorry, I had a joke, but I'm not gonna say it because I don't think it's PC enough. <clears throat> okay, that's fair enough. Uh, and he says to everybody, it's Walter, he's a werewolf. And then they get a call at the police station saying, oh, hang on, uh, the, sorry, the police station then calls and says, no, 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 we've got Walter here, and he's with Richie Hartman. And it turns out that Walter escaped a few weeks ago from the mental asylum. Yep. Or as he calls it, the Institute for Werewolves. Um he set up camp next to uh, in a random house next to Hubie and his roommate is Richie Hartman who escaped because he missed him so much he wanted him to come back to the asylum with him and they're sort of there you know they've known each other for years he's scratching Steve Buscemi like a dog and he says "Um, what have you been up to since you came to find me and Bob Schneider's like oh you know me pissing on this pissing on that and he's like, oh, you do love pissing on things. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm pissing right now. <laughs> and he's just sat there pissing himself in the police station. It's yeah. just, like, very random. But yeah. uh, it's fun. I like it. So, yeah, that kind of 
highlights that R- Hubie Dubois is talking nonsense, and it's not a, a, a roommate, um, a werewolf at all. It's these two who are roommates. So that's weird. He goes to the Witch FM, which is the radio show, which is a nice name. Well, just before that, he is actually blamed. People start saying, maybe, Hubie, you're the one that's been snatching these people. Maybe you want revenge on all the people that have been mean to you. Oh, yeah, because they do go like, actually, all these people hated you. Yeah. So he runs off, and this is where he goes to the radio station. And and he's walking in going, oh, look at this place. And they're hearing on the speakers like the, the, the show which is playing, which which you get. And he's walking along hearing the female voice. Then he just looks sexy, through the... Sexy, gla- very sexy female voice. And he goes and looks through the glass window at the DJ, and it's... <laughs> it's Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at him and goes, oh... Okay, I think we're gonna. Well, I think we're gonna play another song now. Yeah, it does. Because like I've got months. a guest, so I need to attend to. <clears throat> yeah. Then he walks in. He goes, "Hey, how you doing, Hubie?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. It's quite funny. Um, and then his wife comes out with a cup of tea for him and stuff, and she's got, "Hey, lover boy." Yeah, yeah, it's very and funny. Basically, they say someone um, is called in. Uh, someone calls in and gives you a lot of. A request for you puts a lot of requests through for you and they're like maybe it's violet violet valentine she's the one that maybe loves you and then he's like hmm maybe violet's the one that's doing all of this why does he maybe go she the, why does he go to the dj's radio station uh just because he's running away from the money and oh and because he finds out that someone's been um putting a lot of requests in for him and he think he suspects that whoever that is might be the person that's behind this okay so then he starts thinking maybe it's Violet that's doing it because she has showed violent streaks a few times. She said she's threatened to beat people up for Hubie, you know, so maybe it was Violet, maybe maybe not. So Hubie says to the cops, I'll meet her at the lighthouse, just like the lighthouse from the fog. Great, great stuff. Um, and she's like, why am I here? And he's like, because... Uh, and the cops basically have said to him, whoever it is has got a burner phone. So we're going to ring it when you're with her. And they ring the phone, and it's not Violet's yeah, phone. Yeah, because she, she, the cops are like in a van with headphones on listening, like, you know, he's got a bug on him, etc., etc. And they're like, it's like, uh, so a safe word, say that if it all else fails. He, he, she walks up to him without saying anything, and he says the safe word. And yeah, like, oh, he's, oh, he said it. Or, pumpkin. Pumpkin. It pumpkin. Like, straight away, and like, he just said it straight away. Like, you know, no confession at all. <laughs> Um. So, but they yeah. phone the pl- they phone the uh, phone just as he says it, and she doesn't have it on her. And they're no. like, "It's coming from your house, Hubie. Have you checked the so children?" Good. It's so good that line when he says that. Or oh, Black never- Christmas. Yeah, and they quickly exchange "I love yous," so we know that there's definitely de- something de- between them. Declare love for each other, yeah. which is cute. Um. Uh, well, we get back to his house. He's like, "Mom, where are you, Mom?" His house has been absolutely mum. trashed, doesn't it? Yeah, he's concerned for his mum, isn't he? Uh, just before we see him get home, though, um, Steve Buscemi's jogging in just, like, underwear. He's all, like, dishevelled. Like, oh, he's all... he sees the mum, doesn't he? Hello! He, how are you He doing? says, yeah, your house is trashed. And she's like, yeah, it happens every year. Uh, Hubie, get, yeah, so Hubie arrives. And he sees all these people. He goes out the back of his house and it's just all these people. And it's like, what? And it's all Radio the people to... which we thought have died are all tied up. They're all tied to stakes in the garden. And you're like, what, what on earth is going on here? And then it turns out that it's his mother. Wearing a kayak in makes me wet t-shirt. Kayak. I love it. And she's pouring gasoline all over them and basically reveals today was the day I wanted you to stand up for yourself because of all the bullying you've ever received and you didn't. So Mama's going to have to do it for you. So this is a bit of your Friday the 13th now. Pamela Voorhees upset that the way her son was treated. Yeah, uh, I do think at this point here it feels like it's going on a little bit. And I think it should have been cut down just a little bit more. Yeah. I feel it, like it seems to be going on a little bit longer. The flashbacks and stuff do go on for a little bit, you're right. But I do like the bit where she lights the match and flicks the match at the gasoline. And he has only got a dribble of soup left. And he flicks the dribble of soup. And in slow motion, it 
it midair it extinguishes the the match, saves everybody. Yeah, it's quite funny. Then the cops pull up, and for some reason they've brought the maniacs with them, the, the, the mental patients from the asylum, because they. Before the cops can even say anything, Steve Buscemi says, nobody shoot until I say so. And they've got like their fingers out like guns. And and one of the cops is like, did we have to bring them? And he's like, yeah, I don't really know why we did bring them, to be honest with you. Yeah. They've just brought the, the crazy guys with them for no reason at all, um, which is quite funny. They all say sorry. Then we get a sweet, your typical Adam Sandler thing now where everybody says sorry and their reasons for bullying him. Um, you know, I'm sorry. It's really hard being the cool kid. I'm sorry. I'm actually, you know, stupid. I'm not even dyslexic. I'm just stupid. I've got a low IQ and I bully you to make myself feel better and all this kind of stuff. And it, yeah, it, it does drag here. I yeah. will say. I, I, but it's an Adam Sandler movie and it wouldn't be an Adam Sandler movie without everybody being all nice at the end. Um, and they also, sorry, mum runs away. Because they she does that Frankenstein. There's a trick that people do, which is where they go oh, Frankenstein, and you point, and everyone while everyone looks around, you run away. And Mummy does that at the end. She goes Frankenstein and runs off. And then Hubie's on TV, being interviewed, and he confesses his undying love live on TV to Violet. And then we cut to one year later. He is the mayor. He's the mayor of Salem, and it's Halloween, and all the kids have got great halloween costumes dressed as everybody from one year earlier so the cop you know and everyone that was in it all the different characters and yeah he's the mayor everything's cool happy halloween to all it says and then we get the end credits with all the outtakes and silly moments and screaming well, and... yeah um it, yeah well i didn't stop with all this because yeah you had 13 minutes of credits yeah, about five of them were outtakes. But, the rest of it but, is all just like... But i tell you what, though. That's a really stupid thing to do, and it's such a bad idea. Because when you go watch a movie, so often you're going to, like, not me, just in general, people could do it. They could look at the time length and go, oh, I don't know, oh, I just want a 90-minute movie. This this is hour 43. That means what? it's 13 minutes. It actually is a 90-minute movie. That rule is kind of redundant, though, because... Um, with streaming now, with Amazon Prime, with Disney Plus, especially Disney Plus, and with Netflix, when the film finishes, there's still usually five minutes left of thank yous to other countries who've done the dubbing and their language. So actually, the film itself isn't 13 more minutes of credits. It's probably only about five or six minutes of credits. And then after that, the film itself would have ended. But because it's on Netflix, they then have to add all this extra stuff in that isn't anything to do with it. So like when you watch an episode of one of the new Marvel shows, for example, Loki, um, you you press play and it says 57 minutes. You're like, wow, this is a one hour episode. But the episode is actually only about 40 minutes. And then there's the credits. And then after the credits, there's 10 minutes of foreign language stuff that isn't anything to do with you so you don't need to worry about that so I, I get what you're saying but actually with streaming these days you should always take about five to ten minutes off of a runtime uh i think regardless to that if you said some people aren't going to think like that at all and they're going to see that and they could go one hour 43 and no i'm not going to watch it but if it had been 90 they'd been like yeah i'll watch it but I think the, the credits are fun because it's got some of the funnier bits from the I, earlier I, in there, I, I and you get loads of outtakes as I, well. I stopped at that point. I was like, oh, you should always watch the outtakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have worked. People have worked hard on these things, Gab. And yeah, but they're it's, also outtakes for a reason. No, but I mean the credits. You know, oh, I watched to the very last credit on every film I watch because I want to show that respect to the people in the crew. All right. It's the same reason I clap uh, when I'm in the cinema, you know, when the film comes to an end. People think that's weird, but I've always done it. Okay. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I was just like, I don't remember you doing that. All right, okay. You do, and I do, you I do, do you. I do watch the credits occasionally, but I don't always watch them right there. But I did on this one just because there might have been a scene at the end and there wasn't. I, Sarah and I do because we, we're sitting sort of kind of monging out watching the end of credits going, oh, I'm going to turn it off in a minute. But we're like, there might be a funny name. So <laughs> I like to get the funny names. I know what sort of film will have something either during or after the end credits. So I know. And if it's a film I've seen a million times, then I know I don't need to watch it. But 
with some of the films I love, because the songs that play over the end credits, sometimes you want to hear that song as well, you know what I mean? Like an 80s film or something. You want to hear that song. But anyway, regardless of all of that, that was Hubie Halloween. We, well, you and I, I and you, both fell in love with this film. This is the fourth time I've seen it now. Uh, yeah, I've probably seen it about that many times. I watched it a couple of weeks before reviewing it because I wanted my kids to watch it. And um, they're kind of like, they're a bit scared by some of it, which is fair enough. They're only two. But yeah, it's good fun. And look, I know that people are going to sort of t- say the same things they said about you and I reviewing American Werewolf in Paris. But it's our show. And we love Hubie Halloween. I like we it. We recommend it. We give it a thumbs up. And it, it's just a, an, an innocent, fun vibe and pairs up well with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I'm pretty sure someone that has gone or oh, watching that movie has listened to us talk about it, rave bats, gone, oh, cool, I'm going to check out a movie. Then they're going to comment on Facebook and say, fuck you guys, I watched that movie and I still don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And that's fair enough, man. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, he, some people won't like his voice in it. <clears throat> some people won't like his man child. I was just like, I'm, I'm into it. <clears throat> right, let's some get people, out of here. Some people won't like the dick and fart jokes, but we love all of that shit. There isn't that many dick and fart jokes. It's not one <clears throat> fart joke, is it? There's loads of dick and fart jokes. All the way through it, his mum's wearing t-shirts about boners yeah, and no get me wet. Joke, no yeah, but d- dick and fart isn't about dick and fart. Dick and fart is a phrase you use when you're talking about genitalia jokes. Like, jokes about that kind of thing. Okay. And there is some farting in it, and a dog eats his own shit. Right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Bye! Bye! And we're back. We're back again. That was episode 142. That was Halloween for 2023. We yeah. covered an Adam Sandler film, Gavin. That's yeah. weird, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. And we hope I hope that you, if you haven't seen either of these films, that you watch one of them or both of them and you like one of them or both of them. Because that's what our goal is, really. Um, they're, they're fun. And I hope that you enjoyed them. So that's that. Happy Halloween, Gav. Happy, happy, Halloween, happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you're having some nice treats in your mouth. We don't eat on the podcast anymore, do we? No, no, because I thought I'd been sucking on one of those throat spits. Sucking on something in Amsterdam. Ah! Oh, dear. No. Da- Daddy. No, don't, don't say Daddy. Jesus. No. Let's talk about what's coming up next. What is next? next? Episode 143 is next, and that is a patron pick. And I can now confirm that our patron, Rachel... Hey, Rach. And Rach, I must say that Gav does not know what I'm about to say, so this is going to be a surprise to him as well. I have no idea. We are going to be covering your two picks. The first one is from 2020, and that is the film called run I've never heard of it with yes well I'd never I think I've heard of it I've never seen it and I know you wouldn't have seen it either Uh, and that's with Sarah Paulson which a lot of people will know from American Horror Story and uh, she's been in loads of horror films basically Uh, and the if I give you a little synopsis Gab of it Mm -hmm. it came out in 2020 and it says a homeschooled teenager begins to suspect that her mother is keeping a very dark secret from her Oh, that sounds good, especially as my yep. middle child is now homeschooled and she is also a teenager. Yeah, so I think that's going to be a good one. Um, so, And the other one, I know you're going to be very excited about the other one because I know you were watching it recently. The other one is going to be a 2017 movie mm-hmm. starring Nicolas Cage. <laughs> what is it? And Rachel is asking us to review Mom and Dad. Oh, okay. So we're both basically, uh, I know where she's coming with this, is both like t- parental uh, doing something to parental your kids. Parental paranoia. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> parental paranoia. What, what's going on, Rach? <laughs> <laughs> well, she said she was blown away by Run. Um, she did have another movie, but then she swapped it out last minute and said, actually, I really want you to cover Mum and Dad. And I was like, look, we love talking what, about Nicholas Cage. What was the other film? It was a film called Nowhere. 
I believe, which okay. is about a uh, a pregnant asylum seeker stranded on a cargo. Oh uh, yeah, that's quite shipping good container or no, something. I'm glad then because that sounds quite like I've I've seen that and I, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to have a pregnant woman in a shipping container. To me, that's just like oh no, no. I yeah. feel so bad for them. I don't. I'm glad. So we're covering Run from 2020 and Nicholas Mum Cage. and Dad from 2017, which is great. Excited to do that. Thank you, Rach, for getting that back to us. I, I, um, yeah, there's an amusing bit in it when Nicholas Cage's mum and dad turn up. My dad, mum, what are you doing here? And then they just stab him. So good. <laughs> so that's that. And then episode 144. It, it's funny because I picked that up not long ago because my teenagers do my fucking editing. <laughs> I, I remember you saying for, that. I picked up for release. <laughs> uh, so after that, it'll be episode 144. And we're going to be traveling to New York in the early 80s for Basket Case from 1982 and wow. Chud. 82 Basket yeah. Case. Fuck me. 80, and, dirty night in New York. And Chud from 1984. So very early 80s New York Jesus. stuff. Jesus. There's some practical effects talk, going you should, on. You should talk about a crack. For the yeah, there'll be some crack strange. going on. Yeah. And then episode 145 after that, we'll be looking at some anthologies. We'll be finally get around to the Twilight Zone movie from 1983. Oh, I knew it. I fucking, I've been known for ages. Was, at one point, I was like, I'm sure we're doing a Twilight Zone movie, because I fancied yeah. watching it. Okay. Twilight Zone movie from 1983. There'll be some really interesting stuff to talk about with that one. Is that the one with the helicopter incident? Yeah. And well, also... I guess that's going to be World of Strange. Yeah, it probably will be. And mm. we'll also be looking at Cat's Eye from 1985. Which Stephen I have King. in a Stephen King DVD like little box set thing, and I've never seen it. So It's so good. I love it. I love it. I'm interested in watching that, so that'd be good. So that's our next three episodes. And then our fourth episode after that will probably, looks like, it'll be our Christmas episode. If we, well, if we get the others out, yeah. Which, which we should do. It's only three episodes. So it should be fine. Uh, yeah, Christmas will be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, and that'll be our 10-year anniversary as well. So, woohoo! Yeah, exactly. Exciting I'll have to get some eggnog for that, but obviously in the non-alcoholic style. Eggnog. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Mm. Right, okay, well, that's good. There that's we go. Thanks, so, yeah. Yeah. yes, so that's, that's what's coming up. So thank you, Rachel, as well. Um, so let's do some admin and then we can say our goodbyes and fuck off home. Indeed. Well, we're home. Well, I will, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, you come to so, my home and I'll go to your home. All right. Weird, but let's think, do it. I think the kids will be confused, won't they? When Daddy comes to... Uh, I'll be, I've got beard and glasses, though, so I'll come up and say, Hiya! And they'll be like, it's, what's wrong with Dad? Yeah, I'm not sure what, what they'd make of that. it would be quite funny. I think they'd shit themselves, then. Oh, they were shitting themselves earlier when I put my skeleton mask on. Well, Jack wasn't, but Edith was really worried about it. She kept going, ah, it's just daddy. Ah, it's just daddy. Just and I didn't say anything. I just stared at her silently until I could tell that she was starting to get a little bit worried. So then I took the mask off and she said, cuddle? I said, yeah, let's have a cuddle. <laughs> that was mean. Very mean. Uh, we have been the podcast on a haunted hill thank you for listening everybody we are a proud member of the legion podcast network couldn't put my teeth in them when i said that uh to find out more about them go to legionpodcast.com we are on there as are all the other shows under the network uh you can find out more about them on facebook just go to the legion podcast page on facebook if you want to have fun and come to our page, the podcast on Haunted Hill, especially this time of year, then, if you want then to join have us. Fun, come with us. <laughs> come with me if you want to live. Um, we have a lot of fun, especially in October, but all year round. So you can join. You can tell us what you're watching, what you hate, what you love, trailers, you know, all that kind of stuff. I put up <clears> random <throat> stuff. Recently, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about it now because no, not one fucking person liked or commented on it. I took a still shot of Dirty Harry. It's a Dirty Harry movie where uh, there's some bent cops in it where they are like um, a crack firing tr- like crew and they're going around just killing people and stuff. And uh, he meets them. Sorry for this tangent. So the Dirty Harry meets them in the firing range and says, you boys come give me a... Come see me soon, yeah? I want to put us together a team. And at that point then, I was like, oh my God, I'd love to see Clint Eastwood running this team of crack-firing 
like cops going around taking out the bad guys in San Francisco. And that's what I put on Facebook, and no one commented. Dan, give me some comment from that. Oh, I did see it. I thought I commented. Sorry if I did it. But yeah, I agree. Uh, Because that was the last Dirty Harry movie I watched, funny enough. So Um, you know the exact bit I mean? Yeah, I know the bit. And I thought, wow, that's cool that he he saw something in those guys Mm. that... He thought, well, they're badasses. So and I I'm thought they could be like, yeah, and I thought he could make a real, like, badass crew taking out people. They turn baddies. out to be the baddies, they don't. But they? that, yeah, spoiler. Sorry. It's like a 45 year old film. Um, and uh, where were we at? Yes, Facebook. So that's that. And wherever you're listening to us now is where you can continue to listen to us. We are on Spotify, YouTube, and all other podcatchers and podcast platforms, Apple, and all that I business. Think, I think, isn't there a major one shutting down? Stitcher, is it? I'm not sure. There's one, of the, sure. one of them is uh, going to be no more. Oh, goodbye whoever you were uh we're also on instagram just go to the podcast on haunted hill insta and also we mentioned our star wars film that's coming out star wars sanctuary moon 17th that's, of november and that's going through deadbolt films which is our production company so go on to youtube right now look up deadbolt films and subscribe subscribe and, and hit the bell you're gonna know get the notifications yeah. um yeah deadbolt films youtube channel you can go to deadboltfilms.com uh, we're on instagram under deadbolt films as well even if you want to come on watch the star wars film and comment of how shit you think it is and what a bad job we've done that's fine by me that is fine i should also mention that we have an email address which is the podcast on wanted hill at check outlook.com did you check, did you check sorry do you check yeah i always check it oh, check it good. regularly look i'm actually looking at it right now I don't actually ever uh, check X. Oh, God. We're not on it anymore, so... Twitter. Yeah. You, that blew your mind, like, on the last episode when I told you it, it was called X. It's fucking... I was like, oh? Yeah. I think I actually personally believe that it's been shut down and the first step is let's change it to a name that no one likes because no one really uses it anymore. And I think Elon Musk just thinks it's just not a very positive thing to have in the world, so let's get rid of it. It's it's all a bit weird. And finally, Patreon. If you want to become a patron and support the show and help the show grow, um, and as well as that, you get to get some little freebies, like a free T-shirt, which we will post to you no matter where you are. And it will get to you eventually, won't it, Don Goya? <laughs> but eventually. Um, you also get back episodes. You get bonus episodes, video content. Yep. Um, and also a shout-out at the end of every episode. Then all you need to do is go to Patreon and search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. If you can't find it, then hit me up either on Facebook or on that that email address which is the podcast on haunted hill outlook.com and you could become a patron and as well as all of those freebie things you also get to pick your two films to be reviewed by us and every three episodes is a patron pick as it i is. mentioned rachel is next and uh, two episodes after that they'll be back to matthew godley and i already know i've already been talking to him about his uh talking to him last night in fact about his picks so that's exciting um so yes patron 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 and thank you to our patrons thank have, you so much thank you for helping to support us yeah thank it's you i'm it's glad a, we entertain you as little as one pound or a dollar a month it doesn't matter it's beautiful of you to do so and i am now going to read out all of the patrons in stupid voices so thank you very much to dan collier thank you uh, matthew godley thank you uh, to, to jamie jenkins thank you kevin uh, thank you sarah k thank you uh rachel thank you uh, Jay McCready. Thank you. And uh, Alex Abu. Okay, thank you. I just wondered, never know what you could do next. Never know. You never but, know. I don't. Thank you so much for that. I'm glad that uh, uh, hopefully Dan's brain changing into different voices for your name is worth worthy <laughs> of your worthy of your hard earned cash. Thank but you. Also, you get to pick. You know. And no, no, no. There's all, all the other business. benefits as well. Uh, yeah. And I was gonna have said I was gonna do some fucking more video stuff for uh, Halloween and stuff and I haven't and I've just been working on this bloody Star Wars film <laughs> that's all good it's all good 
So, happy Halloween, Gavin. Happy Halloween, happy everybody. Halloween, everybody. Trick Enjoy or treat. Be Hope safe. you've all had a wonderful time of the year, October. Watch lots of spooky films. And have been um, safe. And all your teeth had fallen out from eating too much candy. Um, so, I guess we should say goodnight. Good night. It's a good night from Hubby Dubois. It's a good night from Ray Liotta. Oh, in a clown, my wig. Just trying to honour with young girls. It's a good night from Steve Buscemi taking a shit in the corner of your basement on a newspaper. Yeah. Imagine finding that. Jesus Christ. Good night from Abbott Costello. Yep. Yeah.